Furniture Bomber Hockey is on the air. Ahead to Dustin Lee, short hand, scores! There's the hat trick! And here comes the hat! Literally to win D4 of ice! Another big game for the Hawks, not Captain. For over 75 years, CFAR has been providing play-by-play coverage of the good guys, and the tradition continues. Dave pumps off the puck, comes off front, Paul's got it! Tries a goal up and he scores! Live on CFAR 590, 1029 CFAR, and all around the universe on flinflononline.com. Gets up on a backhander! Oh, big save there! Celine Dion, nothing but glove! What a save by Harmon Laser Hume, that was a beauty! And now here with the call of the action. Look at this! Getting more for it, come over and hit it, go over and get out of it! Mr. Rob Hart. You're on. Alrighty, hockey fans. Uh, hello and welcome to the one and only Whitney Forum as we're set to get back with another edition of uh, Great Furniture Flint Flon Bomber Hockey. Been a long time since so we had a chance to call the game on radio in this building. And boy, the Flint Flon Bombers playing some great hockey. Uh, back-to-back wins in the showcase. A convincing 5-1 victory here last night. And, and doing the math, outscoring the opposition 19-3 in the last three hockey games. Last night wasn't sure Humboldt, uh, a high octave team. Uh, came in, took out a Flint Flon, I thought pretty good the opening period. Got the first goal, but the Flint Flon bomber penalty kill. And then, of course, we just heard a little bit of that highlight package, Harmon Laser Hume. I think the best game I've seen him play all year. But you know what? Uh, he seems to, uh, these better teams seem to bring the better out of him. And I know there's been some talk, maybe about some inconsistencies in his game earlier this year. But, you know, it was fun. I was thinking about this after last night's game. Anytime Harmon Laser Hume's had to have a big game, he's done it. Let's go back to last year's playoffs. The Esther Van Bruins, brink of elimination, game six. Not a lot of people thought Flint Flon was going to go into Affinity Place to win game six. They did. Harmon was great. Followed that up with a game seven victory here. Won the series against the Humboldt Broncos. And like the rest of the team, ran out of gas in the final against a, uh, a very good battle for team. But it seems like to me, you look at Harmon's career in the last couple of years, anytime he's needed to come up with a big game, he's done that. And he certainly did as we welcome Austin Mattis back to uh, the broadcast booth tonight. Austin, you were here last night. I know doing lots of work on the hockey TV broadcast. And uh, let's face it, Harmon Laser Hill, uh, last night's first star, and de- deservedly so. Well, absolutely. i got to agree with you on that one, Rob. Probably the best game we've seen from him so far this year. He's had lots of great games, but usually he lets one or two in. Yesterday, he let that first one in. Again, that's a funny one to me, and I didn't even think to ask about it. Like, I think he lost that puck in the lighting. He put his glove up, and he saw how he, he kind of backed away. He, he lost sight of it. Oh, absolutely. And you know what? I was kind of I was looking at the replay after when I went home, and even on the replay, you can really tell like he had no idea where the puck was. So rather than that first goal, I think that was maybe their second or third shot. He played lights out, and you know what? Got to give credit to the defense of the Bombers, too. They really made that humble Broncos team play from the outside. And when I was talking to him after the game yesterday, he really said that. He's got to give credit to his team because he, he saw basically every single puck last right. night, and that's what he said. He could see every puck that was coming at him, except for maybe two or three, including the, the one goal. But that was the difference last night. And as you already mentioned, the power uh, the power play for the humble Broncos just wasn't working. Got to give credit to the Bombers' penalty kill. But you know what? That could come back to bite them today because you can't, you can't give up a team six power plays especially against the humble broncos they're a great team and like i said just way too many penalties for the flint flon bombers luckily yesterday now they have the number one penalty kill in the league and they showed it but they can't be doing that today because it could have a different result well again in a humble buries one of those early power plays last night maybe it's a different game but Harmon and the penalty kill unit uh, penalty killing unit did their job uh flint flon on some type of a roll at 17 one and one been the number one team ranked in the country the last three weeks and a victory against Humboldt tonight would probably go a long way into doing that again. But, uh, you know, seedings aside, uh, it's interesting to see again because it, these two teams are on a collision course to the playoffs. They're going to have to go for each other at some point. I want to see this kind of bounce back game here tonight. You know Humboldt's going to be better. Expecting a tighter game. Not only am I looking to see how Humboldt bounces back after their obviously disappointing loss, but what does Flynn Flan do? they got to correct a few things. Coughed up the puck a few times. Got to get their power play going a little bit. And Harmon Laser Hill will get a chance to go back-to-back nights here. But uh, intriguing matchup between two of the league powerhouses. And uh, I'm really looking forward to it. We'll take a quick break. We're going to hopefully get both coaches' interviews in here tonight. Mike Reagan sums up last night's victory. And we hope to get Scott Barney in as well, a perennial favorite around the SJHL. One of the best guys to kick back and talk anything about, let alone hockey. Scott Barney, one of my favorite people in the SJHL. Good to see him back at the Whitney Farms. So we'll take a quick break. Come back with the respective coaches. And, of course, the SJHL coaches show. Creighton Furniture, Flint Bomber Hockey is back. And back 
where it's uh, more fun to call the game than anywhere on the planet. We're talking the Whitney Forum right here on 102.9 CFAR and FlintFawnOnline.com. Clear. Great North GM in Kurt Paw is one of the leading new and used vehicle dealers in northern Manitoba. Okay. Equipped with a highly trained and professional sales department, they also have multiple certified trained technicians on site to make sure you get the best service for your car, truck, or SUV at an amazing price. Great North GM. It's always a great day at Great North GM. Ud Bay is proud to be a sponsor of this Bomber broadcast. Through bursaries, donations for hockey schools and clubs, community events, charities, and so much more, Ud Bay has supported the Flint Fawn community with their dedication and generosity for decades and then thanks to be a major donator to charities, events, and organizations. Ud Bay thanks the people of Flint Fawn and the surrounding communities for their continued support. You're on. Welcome to our SDHL Coaches Show. Mike Reagan, the head coach of the Bombers, joins us. Mike, uh, Big victory last night against the Humboldt Broncos. A little bit of a slow start in the opening period, but boy, I, in my opinion, I thought Harmon Laser Hume's best game in the season. Yeah, I agree with you, Hardy. Um, you know, I think that taking a four-minute penalty early on is, uh, you know, puts us on our heels there. And you know, we did a great job of uh, killing that. Uh, our penalty kill's been great all year. Um, we hired a new penalty kill specialist, and he's done a tremendous job with the PK this year. Um, so. We're happy about, uh, you know, getting that done and, and, you know, it built some momentum for us going forward. And I think that, uh, you know, Harmon, you know, had a tough one go in on him. But after that, he was uh, rock solid and allowed the guys to get their feet under them and uh, obviously scored five un unanswered goals. Against a really good hockey team. I mean, they came out and they played you really good in the opening period. It was interesting. I chatted with a few of your players, Mike, and I thought it might be a bit of an issue. And again, I won't take it away from Weber and Estevan, but not the skill level that Humboldt is. Teams that you really manhandled to showcase had the puck, I'd say, 80% of the time. Did it take you a while to kind of uh, get used to the speed that Humboldt brought in last night's game? No, well, I think that it, it was a fast game. No, no question about it that there was some adjustment for some of our, our younger guys that maybe haven't faced that before. But like I said, I mean... Um, you know, Humboldt probably felt the same way. They haven't played a team that, that skates as well as us. And, you know, it's uh, it was an entertaining game. And, um, you know, there's always adjustments that you make throughout throughout a game. And I think that uh, some of our young guys got a little more comfortable and, and started to have a little more, more poise with the puck. And, um, you know, again, a lot of that in the first period is caused by us taking uh, a couple penalties, you know. So when you take penalties, you put yourself on, on your heels and, and – uh, you know, in kind of a defensive shell, and, um, you know, it took us a while to get going. Well, I mean, like you said, you scored five goals against a really good team, five unanswered, gave yourself a little bit of breathing room. A little bit of everything in last night's game, you had the good goaltending. I mean, your penalty kill shut down a very good power play. And you got some secondary scoring, too, Mike. I mean, usual suspects, Justin Lee's got a big goal last night. And, uh, you know, uh, you're able to get some secondary scoring for Brock Mueller, uh, who had, had a nice goal, Joey Lee. So uh, yeah, a little bit of everything contributing to the victory. Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, Alexi scores a big one for us early on to get us uh, all even. And, and then obviously, you know, Justin, like you said, the, the big boys contributed too. But, uh, you know, getting uh, two goals from your fourth line uh, is huge for a hockey team. And, you know, we, we don't think of them as a fourth line. I mean, they might be the fourth one to go out the gate. But uh, we have a lot of respect for what they do and, and uh, what they bring to the table. They play with a lot of energy. Uh, a majority of the game, um, you know, when they're on the ice is in the offensive zone. So they don't spend a lot of time in the defensive zone um, because they hound pucks and they get pucks deep and, and go to work down low. So uh, really pleased with uh, their efforts last night, and it's nice to see them get rewarded. Absolutely. Uh, I always say it's tough to beat the same team back-to-back -back nights, especially, uh, you know, another powerhouse team in the league. Uh, what, what are you, you going to have to do a little bit different, to, a little, do, maybe a little, do a little bit better tonight? Because obviously they're going to be they're going to be a little bit better. Yeah, I think the biggest thing that we talked about today was uh, you know staying out of the penalty box. We we took six penalties and and during that time they had 23 shots on net. You know that's almost half their shots were were from the power play and so we got to do a better job in that area and we also didn't win a lot of faceoffs when we we're killing. So. Um, you know, something that we discussed this morning in, a, in our stretch and, and meeting, and, uh, you know, we're looking to be better in those areas. I see Matt Egan is back in, in the lineup tonight. Yeah, we're real excited for Eags. You know, I mean, it's been a tough uh, start to his 20-year-old year, and obviously when you face a, a major injury like that, it can be frustrating, and, uh, um, 
you know, I think that mentally he's had to go through some, some things here with trying to stay positive and, and see the light at the end of the tunnel. But I know he's itching and uh, ready to go. He really wanted to play last weekend, but, uh, you know, we thought we, just with his uh, injury history and, and stuff like that, we want to make sure that he's 100% uh, when he gets back in the lineup, and, and we felt that uh, tonight would be a good night for him. Well, it's got to be tough. You know, the team's playing so well. The number one team in the country has been a part of the team for the last few years. I, I can imagine how tough that would be trying to sit back and watch. Yeah, I think that uh, he's been a good soldier. You know, I think that he was um, disappointed, obviously, in, in the injury, uh, not really knowing what it was. It was kind of a funny one that we, um, you know, had assessed here a couple times and didn't seem to be getting better. And, uh, you know, he, he was able to go down, down south to Winnipeg and, and they did some work on him, and, and uh, it seems to have helped, and, and he seems to be uh, back to 100% here. So, like you said, Hardy, I mean, you're, you're watching your, your teammates have so much success, and you want to be out there with them and, and that sort of thing. So um, I'm real happy for him here tonight. You go back with Harmon tonight, Mike? Yeah, yeah. We, uh, we you know, it's a difficult decision because, uh, you know, Kenny's played so well and, and deserves an opportunity as well and, and that, but... Uh, you know, Laser played phenomenal last night, and, and just the fact that he's feeling good about himself, uh, having a big game like that, you know, I think he's he's the right guy to go to here tonight with, uh, you know, having that uh, that momentum. Sounds good to me, Mike. Good luck in round number two against the Broncos here tonight. Thanks very much, Robert. Mike Craig and the head coach, Jim of the Bombers, once again here on 1029 CFBR and FlynnFontOnline.com. Clear. Bailey Homes provides a ready-to-move home as unique yep. as you and your family. From the expertise in the planning, the quality of the build, and the care of the move, let Bailey Homes make your dream home a reality. All customized to fit your needs, they allow you to take the stress out of home construction and spend more time making everlasting memories. Ten seconds. They owned and operated with experiences in the north, visit bailey-homes.ca or call 204-903-5220. You're on. FJHL Coaches Show continues. Scott Marty, the head coach of the Humboldt Broncos, joins us. Scott, we're just having a chat before we went to air, and probably not a 5-1 game last night. I thought for the opening period last night, you really dictated the pace and took it to him. You got the first goal. Maybe you get one of those first few power plays. It's a bit of a different outcome. Yeah, it was a great hockey game. Like, like I said, uh, I think we chatted about it would be good to play 56 of those, just the intensity of it. You know, I thought our young guys responded well off the bus there, right? It's not easy to come in this uh, – this rank here and, and have that kind of first period, right? But uh, like we chatted about, you give some of your guys an inch, they'll take a mile, and you got some good players there that put the puck in the back of the net. Well, there's no question. Two powerhouse hockey clubs. I think it's uh, a weekend a lot of people have been looking forward to, and I'm sure your group as well. I know you've had a lot of big moments. You had a lot of big games here at the Whitney Forum the last few years. Yeah, it's it's great. This is how you measure yourself, kind of, right? And, uh, you know, our fun fun's got four lines they can put out there against anybody. And, and uh, you know, we're a little younger up front this year than we have been, but I uh, really like our start here so far. Uh, I like these games, getting on the road here, seeing what some guys are made of in, in, a, t in a tight rink, right? So we kind of made made a few adjustments today, get some other guys in to see see what they're going to do, and uh, looking forward to another another great game here at the Whitney. Well, if the Broncos are having a great year, only three regulation losses. I mean, Van Blericombe's having a great year, got the goal last night. Newins, uh, Spencer Bell, but you've added some really nice uh, rookies. Tui, uh, leading all rookies in scoring, one of the top scoring defensemen in the league. And, of course, you got Bryson as well. Obviously, I mean, there were guys you knew that would be big parts of your hockey club, but have they kind of uh, maybe peaked before you thought they might? Yeah, I thought the, like, our leadership group's been great. Like, the dress room's probably the best that like, we've seen in here in five years. Like, I think maybe we might be the only team in the SJHL that really hasn't made any moves. So, uh, you know, we're happy with our group that way. But also, you got to get results too, right? It's a results kind of driven. But uh, like I said we have we had great leadership there, obviously, from, from New Windsor captain. But we've had some good young guys come in. Like you mentioned, uh, Tui, uh, Bryson's came in. Uh, you know, you can go through the lineup with some of our young guys. We feel we like our decor a lot. Uh, we will play in two different D tonight. We got eight eight really good guys in the back end there, and uh, looking forward to seeing Sorrell back. He hasn't played here in about six weeks for us. That's one of the really big strengths of your hockey club is your back end, isn't it? Yeah, I think our back end and our goaltending has been been great here all season, and and good to see Motu in here today. And I thought Fisher had a strong game yesterday as well. Made some big saves when needed, and like I said, but you give an inch. Uh, they'll take a mile. He creates two on ones. And yeah, some good players are going to put the puck in the net. So you know, good lessons learned, and uh, you got to learn by them. Now, my biggest thing is you, you have two ways to go: either sit around and and, and, and sulk, or or turn around here and, and learn by your lessons and, and get better here. So hopefully, we've learned by it and have a better result here tonight. You mentioned Motu amongst the league leaders in most goaltender categories. He's had a fantastic year. 
even though you guys lost the playoff series against Bloodborne last year, I thought Motu played very well. How important was that for his development? I mean, that's as high as skill hockey as it gets. Big, pretty good learning curve for him, do you think, heading into this year? Yeah, I think it was huge, right? He came into camp as our, as our third goalie uh, on, on a walk-on, and, and our rule is kind of, hey, it doesn't matter if your guys are signed or not, the best guys are going to make the team, and, and he proved that. And then all through the season, you know, he fought for ice time. And at the end of the year, he's, he's our starter. I thought he played excellent in, in, in the playoffs for us. Uh, he had a big summer here. He really, I think he, he dropped 15 to 20 pounds, changed his diet, was in the weight room, right? And he's a guy that would love to see get, get a division run ride, right? Obviously, consistency is going to be the, the thing that gets him there. And looking forward to a big match here against some top-end shooters. Yeah, like I said, I, he played really good. And his numbers this year don't lie. Has, has he gone a little bit uh, beyond expectation for you, too? Uh, Motu, no. He's, he's, for me, he's, he's been, we figured he's going to be a top goalie, right? And, and we're happy with Fisher as well. And, and good to have those, those, those two goalies pushing each other here. And uh, no, you know what? You're only good as, uh, as, as the backstop is there. And, and, and we're happy with our guys. But Juan, I guess no surprises now. Yeah, they, they can skate, you can skate. Is it, do they play the same kind of style that you've seen the last couple of years? Is it still kind of the, the, it's the same formula that you get from them? Yeah, they're big, strong, heavy, right? They have D, get pucks to the net. Uh, they're not going to give you an inch in front of that net. You know what? The cross checks are coming. Uh, you know what? We told our guys, no need to whine. Let's get up and get to the net. Like, let's play hockey. we got to play between the whistles, and that's the biggest thing for us. Uh, you can't worry about the things that you can't control. And uh, you know what? That's why we have us. We can we can chat with people or, or the officials if we need to. But we need to control what we can control. And I think that's the, the, the only thing we can we can do here tonight to try to get on the, the right side of it. Well, and, and getting a bounce wouldn't hurt either. You got the one nothing lead last. And like we said, you get that 2 nothing lead, it really pushes them behind the eight ball. I think that's one key with these teams that uh, the top-end teams like yourselves, the battle for Splin Fawn, is when you get chances to bury you really got to make it count because you know that they're going to get their chances as well. Yeah, I think we looked at the analytics there today. I think uh, expected goals was 4.7 for us and 3.68 for uh, Flynn Fawn. But like I said, you give some of those guys like Lees and, and Vockler and, and the let list goes on, Anderson, you give those guys time, you know where she's going right in the back of the net. So we got to be, be cognizant of that here tonight and uh, looking forward, like I said, to another great game here, Rob. Canada West coming up for you, too. You must be looking forward to that. Yeah, looking forward to it, right? It's going to be a good experience with, with uh, some elite uh, hockey players from Western Canada and against players from all over the world. And, and uh, you know, I said looking forward to it here and also going to be a good experience for Carter as well here to get behind the bench. And, and it's all about development here at this level and, and, and really looking forward to it on both sides of things. Always good to see you, Scott. You almost get the sense that these two teams are in a collision course to meet in the postseason again, don't you? Well, I'm thinking it might be here for the fourth time in a row. We even had that quick COVID year there, so no, it's uh, it's always great, right? Mike does a great job over there, and, and, uh, and we have a good relationship as well, and, and good to see his teams having success. Thanks a lot, Scott. Good luck to you and the Broncos again here tonight throughout the season. Thanks so much, Rob. Always a pleasure. There he is, Scott Barney, one of the top coaches certainly in the SJHL, and we are underway here. The game technically is 7.30 right now. You've noticed that. Yeah, I know, Rob. Uh, they started, a started only four early. minutes early tonight. So I wasn't preempting my interview with Scott Barney for that. I was just hoping nobody would score. <laughs> anyway, we're underway. Uh, these two powerhouse hockey clubs, once again, Flint Flon winning last night by a score of 5-1. to one. And we'll see how the Broncos bounce back. Humboldt a pretty quick start to get off the face. Talk at the puck in deep. And again, trying to throw everything towards the front of that. Here's Cook's shot. That'll hit a stick and go out of play. Hit the netting, and they do uh, blow it down. 18-28, so a minute 32 gone. As these two teams get set to uh, meet again here tonight. Of course, the Bombers, uh, big road trip coming up next weekend. And we'd like to have a lot of momentum heading into that because that York, those Yorkton and Melville teams, they're not pushovers. Oh, especially that Melville team, Rob. They've beaten some high-quality teams in this SJHL so far. The only team in the league to beat both Humboldt and Flint Flon in regulation this year. Nobody else has been able to do that. Here's Liam Bridger for Flint Flon. The Bombers, by the way, sporting those brand-new uniforms. It's a throwback to, I think, a jersey from the 60s. Looks pretty sharp, and they're wearing them here for the first time tonight. Two each shot. That got blocked off the side. That's so the Broncos starting strong again, kind of like they did last night. And Flintfoot having a tough time getting on their own zone. Cook again. Rips that one wide. It'll come outside the zone in two each. The uh, rookie sensation for the Broncos picks it up in his own zone. Up to Miller. He'll tip that back in Flintfoot territory. McNutt back there for Flintfoot. Picks it up in his own zone, trying to fight off a checker. Held up here, looking at the official for a call. Didn't get it. Ashton Paul, a big goal last night. Tried to pick it up at his own blue line. Knocked away from him. Here's Armall. He'll get a hold hold of it and send it back inside the Flint Flon zone. Laser Hume stops that back of his net. Here's Bourgeois. 
Up the left side, nobody home. Should be a nice to call against Flintflaw as Miles will pick up the puck in front of the Bronco net. 17-27 to go. No score here in the opening period. Flintflaw Humboldt once again. And like uh, Scott Barney mentioned, they've met in the playoffs three of the last four years, including that, uh, that COVID year of 2019. Yeah, it's a common thing meeting the playoffs, and now I think uh, Humble is having a pretty good first period so far, absolutely. Face off back in the Flint Flon zone. McNutt will grab it quickly. Swings the pass ahead to Mueller. Here's Mueller, the bomber side of center. He had a big goal in last night's game as well. Hammers that one in. Weagle back of the net. Waits for it. Knocked it down. Dropped it back there for Miles. Miles had to move it quickly, and he did. That's Strom to center. Mueller took it from him. Puck a roll back in the Flint Flon zone. Chow after it. He's back in the uniform tonight. He'll push that around the left point. The Broncos do hold it in. Here's a chance for Bryson. Couldn't shoot it. All by himself. Throws it back out front. The puck will clear the zone. And Sherrod will get it. Back to Bad Laracon. Stood up here by Tanchuk. Puck rolls back in the flint flon zone. Tanchuk after it. Got the puck to the blue line. Sherrod got it in. Threw it towards the front. And then it goes wide. Here's Mueller. Trying to move it ahead. Good four check here by the Broncos. Flip one of a tough time finding any room. Van Laracon swats that one away. And the puck will make its way back deep inside Humboldt territory. Racing back to get it. It's the rail. Down the ice. Hit a stick. Icing negated. This is Leopard. Back of the net here for Noah Hool. The college bound Noah Hool. On his way to Lindenwood. Boy, had a fantastic game again last night. Here's a chance for Lanthier. Lanthier in over the line. Stops. He wanted to send that out front. Stops skating there. And the Bombers will pick it up and come back the other way. Led by the captain, Justin Lee. Leaves. Gets a good opportunity. Rips that one wide. Bryson will pick it up to the Broncos. They go back the other direction. A quick pass to Van Blericom. Van Blericom across the bomber line. Throws that one in deep. Chases Leopard down. Bumps him off the puck. Leopard, though, does regroup. Lost it again. Broncos have it. Bryson shot on target. Stick save made by Laser Hume. Loose puck will go to the right side of the boards. Flintfon tried to pick it up. Lifted out by Cohen Simp. He was looking for Anderson. Puck behind him. Cook, the D-man, goes back to get it. Here's Cook inside the Humboldt zone. Throws that one ahead. Knocked across the bomber line, but flint on back on the transition game. That's Lees at center. Lost the handle. Poked away that time by Hughes. He loses it. flint gets it back to center. Knocked down here by Nazareth. Intercepted by Bourgeois. Here's Silvestri. Try to slide to Piccinino. Piccinino will pick it up. Piccinino to the front of the net. Racing in to get it back to Blue Liners. McNutt shot a weak one. Knocked down in front. Ended up hitting that Piccinino. Never made it through here to uh, Motu. Broncos get it back. Picked up here by tu- Tui. And they'll say that's a nice and cold. They'll blow it down. Boy, the humble Ford check pretty ferocious here in the early moments. Yeah, putting some great pressure on the Bombers right now. And I think Bombers really only had a few seconds of time on attack there. Looked like it had some potential on the chance that they did. But right now, Bronco is really putting the pressure on the Bombers. Bombers haven't had this, the puck. You notice the puck is not on their stick for long. They're knocking everything away. Tachik at the blue line. Flint wants to look for their first shot of the game. It's the one shot by the Broncos. So not a lot of... Shots either way. Tight checking affair so far. Bombers work it back to Chow. Quickly rips that over to Tanchuk. Tanchuk through traffic. Bouncing puck. Comes back out front. Nobody knows where it is. Spurts free. Picked up here by Hughes. Puck poked back to Bomber. Blue line. Tanchuk on side. Here's Jeff Walker. A quick chance. That'll be the first official shot on goal. And a shot from well out. Most two are pretty much any other goal in the SJHL. Is going to stop those all night long. Got to get those key uh, chances and those key shots in tight. Oh, absolutely. And interesting to see Benjamin Motu in the lineup today uh, instead of Fisher. So see what he can do for the Humboldt Broncos. It's going to be interesting to see. Motu, the number one goalie for the Broncos, putting up uh, a fantastic season this year. Like we said, a leader in most goalie categories, including wins here. Township forced back in his own zone. Tried to lift it out. That got blocked. Aiden Chow after it, got rid of it. Came back to point. Weagle shot. Blocked it up by Olison. Shake it up. Weagle will get it again. Shoots it again. Good save. Harmon laser heel through traffic. He'll reach down and grab it. Getting to the goalie numbers here tonight. Uh, Benjamin Motu. 9-2-2. Two, two. He's got one shutout this year. Goals against a 2.33. A save percentage of 9-16. Harmon Laser Hume was uh, fantastic last night. How about this? 11-1-1. One, one. He's got a shutout. Goals against a 2.28 and a save percentage of 9.23. Both goalies tonight. Uh, premier at the position in the SJHL. Pretty much neck and neck there, Rob, between the two. 
Bell looks like he's going to wave it over the face off circle inside Flint Flon territory to the left of Harmon Laser Hume. Miller goes in to take the draw. Broncos win the face off. Penalty coming up to Humboldt as Bringer's taken down right off the face off. Interference penalty being called here. And Spencer Bell is going to go off, so Flint Flon is going to get a chance to maybe get something going here with an early power play. Austin, the Bomber power play, despite uh, not getting any goals last night. Still number one in the SJHL at 23.7%. The Humboldt penalty kill ranked third overall at 85.4, but a great chance for the Bombers here to make something happen early. And they get a face off inside Humboldt territory. Justin leaves. Back out front to Vokler. Vokler shoots it. Oh, good club save there by Motu. Vokler been uh, great in lots of capacity for football this year, in particular on the power play. Leads the team in power play goals with six. Carter Anderson at the hat trick all power play goals in the showcase win against Wayburn Monday next with five. Here's Hool. On the board to Walker. Back of the goal for Leaves. Looks like Walker a one timer and that one ripped wide and going to force Hool all the way down the ice. A lot of firepower out there for Flint Fund. You got Hool, you got Walker, you got Anderson. Leaves and Silvestri. Four of these players on the ice in the top five in league scoring. That's how. Uh, Good they've been here so far. Can't get much going right now in the power play. Hull forced back on his side of center. Dropped it over to Lees. Lees forced back inside his own zone. Minute 16 to go in the power play. Here's Silvestri up the wing. Did get a big goal last night. Rips that around the board. Anderson will try to catch up with it. Knocked it down. Nice pass. Walker up front. That one got blocked. Walker getting some chances. Hull holds it in. Hull just inside the Bronco line, puts it to the left side. Here's Walker moving to the front of the net again. Off the stick over top of the net. Jacob Walker been the big uh, shooter here. I don't think he's hit the net once under that first chance tonight. Here's Silvestri, 50 seconds to go in the power play. They'll rip that one back in Humboldt territory. Left around the boards that time by Robertson. Puts one, holds it in. Silvestri shot. That gets blocked. Gets it back again. Intercept it. Set down the ice by Strom. And Laser Hill will wait for it. Poole will pick it up. 31 seconds to go in the Flint Flon power play. 12 and a half to go in the period. Here's Piccinino. His backhander knocked out inside Humboldt territory by Miles. Mamick and Scottstad run into each other. And Tanchuk will pick up the puck back of his net. 18 seconds to go in the power play. Quick pass to McDuck. He found on him. It's still got enough of it to get to Bridger. Back out front to the trailer. Piccinino passes in behind him. Bumped off the play. Picked up and hammered off the ice or hammered off the boards by Scottstad. And boy, talk about an outstanding penalty kill by the Broncos. Flint Flon had one shot on that entire power play. Great job there by Humboldt. And Blericoff can't get going. McNutt knocked it away. Here comes McNutt. His quick chance. He ripped that one wide. Piccinino fired it wide again. Flint Flon can't hit the net here early. Tanchuk goes it back in deep. Miles able to knock it out. Made a great play to get it to center ice. There's Van Blericoff knocked away. Bridger back the other direction to Pichadino. Free punch on the fender. Pichadino up front. Bridger in shot. Great save, Motu. What a feed by Pichadino. Flintflon got a quick three on one there. The first mistake by the Broncos. And the Bomber is able to take advantage of the three on one. Here's a chance for Bryson moving in. Bryson has it go off his stick. He'll get it and flip it back to the goal. Van Blarikov out front. But great job by Leopard to steal it. Off the board, Mueller tried to find the lane as it'll roll back inside the Broncos zone. And great end-to-end -end action here, Austin. The best chance tonight for Liam Bridger, but Benjamin Motu shutting the door. You know what, and it kind of goes back to what uh, Scott Barney said in that interview, Rob. You know what, give an inch, they'll take a mile. And right there, first little mistake for Humboldt almost results in a three-on-one goal for the Bombers. So that's going to be the issue here for Humboldt is those little mistakes that turn into big opportunities for the Bombers. Yeah, they don't make many, but, uh, you know, it's, you get your turn over the puck against the team. That both these teams are so good in the transition game. And that could be a, a real big thing here for tonight's game or any other future meetings between these two clubs. Is that transition game losing the puck in the neutral zone area? And that's exactly what happened there when Miles got the, the one handed pass up the middle and pitching to him jumped on it, and the Bombers got a quick three on one. Broncos back the other way. That'll roll over to Laser Hume. He's got it. Nasworth throws that towards the front of the net. 10 47 to go. Opening period 3 2 or 3 3 the shots here early. Humboldt Broncos getting 50 shots on that last night. I haven't seen that happen to the Bombers all season. I was going to say, I was quite impressed. The Bombers, I said, they usually hold teams anywhere to 25 to 35. They usually doubled or tripled uh, out, out shoot everybody. I mean, like they certainly did at the showcase. Well, like we said, it was 5-1 uh, five, five yesterday. Didn't seem like that if you were watching. 
This is Anderson inside his own zone. He can wheel. Carter Anderson to center. Carter Anderson in gate. Got the shot again. It goes wide. Chow there to keep it in. Finds Anderson in the corner. Anderson trying to get away. Gets it back to Chow, but big reach will come in handy as he'll keep that puck in. Hughes is after it. Hughes lost the handle, but it's offside. Weagle goes back to get it for the Broncos. Slides it over to Tui. Tui gets center. Moves that one ahead to Hughes off his skate. Flip on will get it back. Picked up by Anderson. Anderson. Takes off across the Bronco line, dropped it back to Sem, couldn't shoot it. Puck poked away, and McNutt there to get with Newens on top of him. McNutt has to regroup back to the bomber net. Under 10 minutes to play in the opening period. Still scoreless. Chance down for Bourgeois to center for the Bombers. Bourgeois will flip this one in. Picked up and fired around the boards that time by Robertson, the big humble D-man, but Flintwan fights to keep the puck inside the zone. Puck hit escape. Sem Patrick belts it along the boards, can't find the puck. Armel does, and they'll flip it back towards the bomber blue line. Here's Miller. He'll tap it in. Ran out of room. Bourgeois back to the bomber net. Penalty coming up here. We're going to get another interference penalty. And I believe McNutt, the defenseman, is going to be the guilty party this time. He will be, so the Broncos have killed an early bomber power play. We'll see if they can score early on the power play tonight. Something they couldn't do last night, despite giving everybody on the ice a chance to shoot the puck. And Winning a lot of face-offs, doing a lot of things right. We'll see if Humboldt can bury an early power play tonight. Couldn't do it last night. It was one of the big differences in the game. Well, let's see. As we talked about earlier, this, uh, the power play, the Humboldt Bronco is pretty good, but the penalty kill did great yesterday for the Bombers. Let's see what they do here. Let's go on trying to clear. Bryson will hold it in. Bryson along the boards. We'll rip that around the boards. Took a funny hot. Sylvester after it. He gets a hold of it. And he'll get it back to center. Puck will now roll back inside Humboldt territory. Spencer Bell leads the Broncos with power play goals. Oh, sorry. Cage Newens leads the team with power play goals with six. And Spencer Bell right behind him with four. Here's a chance for Bryson. A good chance. Oh, good save, Laser Hume. Rebound rolls behind him. And football will turn the length of the ice. They weather another storm here early. Mo two stops this. He'll give it over to Tui. Tui will take off. Here he is at center. Drops that one back to Weagle. Back to Bryson at center. Bryson across the bomber blue line. Around the boards it goes. Weagle waits for it. Can't hold it down. What a great play by Bridger to slide over and swat it back down in Humboldt territory. Here's Tui. Intercepted by Tanchuk. He'll rip that one. It took a funny hop here. Where's the puck? It's on the side of the net. It hit the board that came back. And I actually thought that that redirected off Mo Tui in his own net, but the, the light never went on. But a little bit of a scary situation there for him. Yeah, I thought that went maybe off the back of his skate and in. But you know what? Got to give credit to Liam Bridger there. Huge job, huge hustle play to knock that from their own zone all the way back into the humble Broncos zone. And then Panchuk, too, gives him the ability to come up to the neutral zone and kill off an extra 25 seconds, which is huge. 8.22 to go opening period. 50 seconds remaining in the humble power play. Still no score. Bombers, Broncos, round two. Flintstone winning 5-1 yesterday. Here's a chance for Anderson shorthanded. Back of the Bronco net. He raced in there, picked up the puck. Now he loses the handle. Here comes Van Blericott. Back across the zone for Amaral. Chow tied him up, made a good play, but the puck will stay in. Chow got it again, threw it to the corner. Fights off his guy. Tui holds it in. Slides the pass back here to Lanther. Out front, Lee's partially blocked it. Anderson can't get a stick on it. Lanther, he'll bring it in. Ties up deep in football territory. We've got one of the Bombers falling down. The play, the fans reacting there. Chow, meanwhile, will pick up the puck back. That does a nice job to get it down the ice. And that'll do it for the Humboldt power play. They're 0 for 1. And a, just a good chance early, but the Bombers had a good chance holding them at bay. Tui back to get it. Tui caught the puck up. Bridger took it from him, fell down, but took it away and got it in deep. Good forechecking here by Liam Bridger. In there battling again. Puck is sent out. Maynick will pick it up inside the football zone. Shot from an off angle, and Poole partially blocked that. Puck back of the Flintstone Bomber net. Picked up by Olufsen up the boards. Partially knocked down here by Strom. In his skates, Strom, as well as the Broncos' uh, Maynick in there. Trying to pin it up along the boards. Flintstone trying to work it free. That's Ashton Paul taking a couple whacks at it. Maynick after it. Knocked away from him. Here's Ashton Paul. He gets thrilled. That should have been an interference penalty, I'm thinking. 
He wasn't even near the puck anymore. Puck set inside the glove here. Stopped here by uh, Laser Hume. Cook will knock it down the Broncos side of center. Gets it back to Hughes. Hughes. Poked it back across the bobber line. Now he steals it. Hughes in alone. The rest of his line was changing. Bourgeois stood him up. Nice body check back of the goal. They'll throw it back up front. Here's Egan on the ice for the Bombers, thinking his much-awaited return. Egan overskates it, goes back, flips it back to the blue line, Mahul. Here's Lees. Around the board, back inside Humboldt territory. Cook there. Egan, a big body check on him. Here's Dewins. Back the other way. Flips it back and flips on territory. Then the Bombers dropped it from the bench. That's Mueller. Hits coming from all over the place. Did you see that one there, Austin? Oh, yeah. What happened? Mueller got smoked. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> I just heard the reaction. Lindblad will dump it back in. Robertson there to touch up. Back to the Bronco net. Quick period, Austin. 5.50 to go. Mueller not happy about that hit. He's getting into it here with uh, Sorello. And I'm assuming that's probably the guy that lined him up, right? Oh, yeah. He went to go line up the big hit on Sorello, and then Sorello just hit him with the reverse check, and it was a pretty good one, Rob, in the neutral zone. You don't see Mueller get upset very often. He's a very poised guy. Stays calm, stays cool, stays selected. Except when he scores a goal, then he gets pretty excited. Yeah, he's had some big moments for the Bombers. Very, very effective player for them. Broncos win the draw deep in football territory. Bryson to the corner from an off angle. Throws it out front. Knocked down by Roberts to the blue line. His shot fired on. Six save made, and then it'll jump up in the air. Gloved here by Laser Hume. I think we're going to finally get our media timeout. We'll take a break. Good opening period here again. Good, fast energy hockey between two of the league's powerhouses. This is Craig Furniture Bomber Hockey back at the Whitney Forum here on 1029 CFAR and FlintBondOnline.com. Clear. At a time at McDonald's, enjoy a tasty breakfast trio. Your choice of sausage, bacon, or chicken McMuffins with a hash brown and a small premium roast coffee for only $5 plus tax. Available before 11 a.m. at participating McDonald's restaurants in Canada. Plus, earn points on every order with the My McDonald's Rewards exclusively on the McDonald's app. Redeem points for your McDonald's favorites like McFlurries, McChickens, and more. Download the app today. Have your education your way with the University College of the North. UCN is Northern Manitoba's post-secondary education institution. It offers more than 40 diplomas, degrees, and certificate programs. We have something for every type of learner. UCN can meet your needs right where you are in your life. Apply now at ucn.ca. UCN, here you can. Are you right with that? Ten seconds. University College of the North. You're on. Welcome back to Whitney Forum. Rob Hart, Austin Mattis. Great furniture bomber hockey back at the Whitney Forum. The Bombers and Broncos. Great entertaining opening period. Uh, not a lot of room out there for either club. And still scoreless, but the Broncos outshoot the Bombers 5-3. to three. Here's Carter Anderson for Flint in the center. He'll throw this one back in for Semp. Back to knock that one down with Robertson. Robertson playing a ton here for the Broncos early. Buck a roll to center. we got something happening in behind the play here between Robertson and Anderson. Fans really uh, reacting to that play. Continues for his fool. Back across the line. Fans going wild here. Did you see that happen behind the play? Oh, I'm paying attention today, Rob. What, what, what happened? Well, Anderson now was trying to get up, and let's just say the humble Bronco wasn't letting him. Fair enough. Nothing getting by Austin Mattis in this game here tonight. Here's Cohen Semp for Flint Vaughn at center. He'll flip it in. He'll chase it down himself. The Bombers making changes. Semp, uh, nice body check on Miles, and he got it in tight. Piccinito sidesteps his guy back out front. Silvestri misses the pass, and down the ice it goes. Stopped here by Laser Hume. He'll shovel it back of the goal to Chow. Chow, good hard pass to center. Bockler, he's got it at center. Bocker, probably the best chances for Flint Vaughn. I guess he had that chance by Bridger, other than that, Bocker, pretty much the only other guy to get himself a good positioning here in this opening period. Bell after it, a rip that around the boards. Picked up here by the uh, Broncos Miller. To Weagle. Weagle, breaking towards the front line. Weagle, a backhander didn't miss by much. Flint Vaughn back the other way. Here's Silvestri to center. He's got Piccinino and Bocker with him. Long shot. Both two again will reach out. And he'll grab that. So Flint Vaughn, four shots at the period, Austin. Only one fit in tight. And I will say, all of them have really been from that left wing kind of area by the left circle. Most of the shots that they're taking. But yet again, great job by Benjamin Mochi being able to put that one out there. But as you mentioned earlier, not the most difficult shots right now. So Humble giving them credit. They're really uh, keeping Flint Vaughn at bay. 
3.58 to go. Piccinino will take the face off against Skogstad to the right of Benjamin Motu. Scoreless opening period. Piccinino, Silvestri, Bocker, the forward group here for Flint Flong with Bourgeois and McNutt on the back end. It's Mamick for the Broncos at center. Try to drop that one back with their way offside. Strom over the right wing. They will blow that down with 3.51 to go here. 6-4 the shots now in favor of the Broncos. Those, uh, yeah, those new bomber jerseys, they are sharp. Uh, did, did you, did you design, design that? Oh, yeah. Don't give me that much credit, Rob. No, I did not design them, but that they do look sharp. Before, game before it went on the air that you designed it. Well, if that's well what which is it? Did you do it or didn't you? Well, I, 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 I'll take credit for it now, Rob. I'll take credit for it. That's what he says, folks. He's designing jerseys now, puts together all these great video shows and putting out bobbleheads. Apparently a Travis Rydell bobblehead night's coming up. Another big brainchild here of Austin Mattis, the marketing manager. Here's Olison cutting in. He'll throw that one in deep. Rock will throw it back to center. Bourgeois trying to tap that back in. Took a funny hop. Here comes Mamick back the other direction. Back in tight this time for the Bronco forward at Scottstown. Big bunch up or big pile up at the side of the Flint Flon Bomber. That's blown down here with 3.21 to go. And not a lot of room out there. For the Bombers uh, offensively in this opening period. Yeah, and comparing it to yesterday's game, the shots on goal from both teams probably cut in half even less than that, and a way more physical game we're seeing today, too. Basically, every single guy's finishing off their check, so uh, both teams definitely came out to play aggressive today. Nazareth will take the face off against Olison. Olison wins the draw. Here's Hool back then around the boards it goes. Picked up by Ashton Paul at center. He'll slide this one in for Bridger. Most too out to play it. Right on the stick that time. Couldn't have done it any better for Hughes. Hughes up to Nazareth. Gets by the D. Now Nazareth cuts in. Oh, what a save by Harmon Laser Hughes. Nazareth blowing by the Flint Flon Bomber D. You don't see that happen often. Big body got to the front of the net. And what a fantastic stop again by Harmon Laser Hughes. Yeah, usually the Bomber team do a great job in holding that line. You know, I had a couple of strides on him when he got that pass, able to blow by. But Rob Lake had mentioned Harmon Laser Hume when he plays in these big games, he always comes and shows up. Joey Lees will take the face off against Nazareth. Joey got a big goal in last night's game. Nice to see him uh, contribute offensively. And he wins the face off as well as they get the puck to center. There's an opportunity here for Egan. Had a roll off his stick. Broncos get it back. Soreo plays that one back over to Robertson. Knocked down in center ice. Joey Lee tried to get a stick on it. Chipped away from him. Bombers will dump it back in. Nazareth and Egan mixing it up just below. 2.41 to go opening period. 7-4 the shots down in favor of the Broncos. Joey Lee, Mueller, and Egan, the forward group here for Flint Flon. And they were. They're coming off the ice. Just at least the captain will come out there. Along with Anderson and Cohen Stem. So Lee set for the faceoff against Nazareth, just outside the Humboldt blue line. Bombers looking for something offensively here in this opening period. Noah Hool back in his own zone, plays it back here to Leper. Leper lost it at the Bronco line, got it back, had to wait for his mates to get back on side, couldn't get it across the line. Justin Lee comes back. Nice pass at the right side to Semp. He's across the Bronco blue line. He'll throw it towards the front of the Humboldt net. You know what? Not a bad play because now you get a face off inside Humboldt territory. No, absolutely. And you know what? When you got Carter Anderson, you're going to you'll put that pass up 90% of the time because with a quick skater like Carter Anderson, you know there's a good chance you might be able to hop on top of that. But Benjamin Motu right there, yeah, so it's a good idea to cover it up. But now they get Flint on the advantage with the face off in the, bro in the Bronco zone. Opening period widening down, 218 to go. Justin Lee is to line up for the face off against Lance here. Off the draw. Here's a chance for Anderson. There's a shot right on. Motu stops that, no problem. Makes a stick save and jumps up in the air. He grabs the rebound as well. Boy, he looks pretty confident between the pipes, doesn't he? Very calm, cool, and collected tonight. Absolutely. Even there, you know what? I thought that maybe could have had a weird bounce gone somewhere else. But you know what? He tracked it out of the air like nothing. He looks very calm in there today. Spencer Bell's going to move in to take the face off against Lees this time. Uh, face off once again deep in Humboldt territory to the left of uh, Moku. There's a shot on the face off. They score! Carter Anderson gets the quick shot away. And off the glove. We didn't mention Moku, maybe too cool, too calm. Actually, Cohen Sepp's going to get the goal. And just off the face-off, he gets a quick chance. It rolls off of Moku's glove. He won.
punts that one back. You know, Rob, you almost took the words out I of my mouth. I missed Rico. I missed those replays. Uh, basically, the same shot that just happened before, that was the exact same shot there. Tried to get it with the glove and just hit the top and rolled right over his shoulder. And like we said, talking about how cool he is, maybe a little bit too cool there, but great job by uh, Cohen Stenz, who they're crediting the goal to, to get the job done there right off the draw. Well, I'm assuming that Lees will get the assist if he won the faceoff. Then right back to Seth right away, shot it on net, and... Uh, Here's an opportunity again for Anderson. Anderson in the middle of the ice. Shoots it. Oh, the club saved that boat by, by time by Motu. So it is Lees' third, or it's a seventh third, rather, from Lees. And the Bombers do find a way to break out with the goal here after not a lot of offensive opportunities. You know what? A very common theme for this Bombers team is they love scoring in the end of these first periods. That's where I noticed that when they play these difficult games is where they get a lot of their goals. I think they do a great job at catching the opposition on their heels. Off the face, off football will keep the puck deep in Humboldt territory. There's Silvestri. Along the boards, he got that puck over to uh, to Piccinino. He got knocked off the play, but got right back up. Here's Walker jumping in. Off the boards, back to Blue Line to Tanchuk. Over to Chow. His quick chat. Both who stopped that. There's a rebound. He stopped the second one as well. Now the puck is picked up here by the Broncos' Mamek. He'll scare, skate with it to center. Mamek across the bomber line. Long shot. Laser Hughes stopped that. 1-0, Flint Fawn, 1-19 to go. What a goal by Cohen Semp right off the faceoff. Bronco throw it back in tight. There's a chance in front. Couldn't pull the trigger, was thrown. Bombers steal it. Silvestri up the wing to Walker, chopped away from him. Pitched it back to center. Got run out, but got the puck back in deep. Exactly one minute to go in the opening period. We got uh, Cook taking down uh, Silvestri against the Bomber fans wanting a penalty. Olsen working hard, gets the puck free. To the blue line it goes. Bourgeois knocked it down. Quick chance, didn't miss by much. And then the loose puck picked up here by the Broncos. Hughes, he'll skate with it to center. Swatted away by McNutt. Flip one gets it back to center. Olsen trying to push that one ahead to Bridger. Intercepted here by the Broncos. And now the big D man Robertson's got it. Ahead to Nazareth. Nazareth across the bomber line. Nazareth walks in, gets the shot away. Safe. Made got his own rebound, got it out front. There's a hard drive that time by Sereo. Blocked by Olison. Rebound picked up. Broncos cycle it to the blue line. Robertson's long shot. Knocked down in front of that that time by Newman. Good pressure here by the Broncos. The dying seconds of the period. 12 seconds to go. Play inside Flint Pond territory. But knocked down here by Ashton Paul. He had his pocket pick, but it comes right back here to Bourgeois. Paul quickly across the line. Chance for one more shot. And Paul going to draw a penalty if he gets a takes a wicked slasher. Olison rather takes a wicked slasher at the opening at the end of the opening period. So Flint Pond will get a chance for the power play. We kick off the second tonight. Yeah, great period, Rob. Honestly, from both teams, and we talked about the lack of shots on goal, but in that last basically three minutes, Flint Flon Bombers get about five, six shots on goal. Now they're up 11-7 in the shots, and great opportunity there for the Bombers. And What's going down at the uh, Humboldt Bronco end of the ice here? Scott Marty's on the ice. He's upset about something. I'm not sure what happened. I take it you missed that. Yeah, no, maybe he's disagreeing with the pen. I'm not too well, sure. Well, something happened on the ice here. They're all lined up here by the net. Something happened. Humboldt really late to get off the ice here. They were yelling about something. I didn't see it. Maybe somebody whacked somebody when they went off the ice. Yeah, I don't know. That's where the replays come in handy for sure. I don't know if he would have had a replay of that or not, but yeah, something definitely happened there. I'll have to check in with Roy McGora, the Humboldt play-by-play guy. He might have seen it. Anyway, wild end to the first period. Oh, absolutely. And you know what? Humboldt Broncos put it on lots of pressure in the bomber zone. Looks like they had a few good chances there. Harbin Laser Hume leaving the net wide open, but great job by the bomber defenseman to get in there and get the puck out of the zone. We'll take a break. The first intermission show for the co-op coming right up. The Bombers lead at one nothing here on 102.9 CFBR and flipflonline.com. The North of Claire Free Co-op has everything you need to make the Six. most elegant feast. That quintessential family meal. You got it. All about that company's coming over, lavish spread, and that perfect just-for-yourself delicacy. But there are also days where you need the co-op to take care of things for you. Ready-made meals for one and family meal kits are the perfect respite from trying to do everything all at once all the time. Freshly in-store made meals. From ethnic delights to the classics, all at the North of 53 Co-op, you're at home there. Yo, dude, can you pass me a bubbly from the fridge? Yep. Here you go. Thanks, man. No problem. What's that sound? Oh, you mean this? What? How do you do that? 
I did nothing. That's just the feeling you get when you drink bubbly, sparkling water. Wow, do it again. 12 flavors, zero calories, zero sugar, a tasty, refreshing feel, bubbly, sparkling water. Whether you like that morning sunshine or prefer to keep the sunlight outside, the power is yours with Shadomatic blinds at Jim's Custom Doors and Windows. With tons of different styles, materials, colors, and purpose, get the Shadomatic blinds that suit your look. And all shutters are custom built to ensure a perfect fit every time. There's a reason they're 10 seconds supplier of premium window coverings. Shadomatic blinds at Jim's Custom Doors and Windows. You're on. And we'll come back to Whitney Forum. So uh, I was chatting with Rory McGordon. He figures what ended up happening was the Broncos thought there should have been a couple seconds still left on the clock. Although that it makes me wonder, though, the faceoff's in their zone. But that's what he thought, that maybe that uh, a couple seconds should have went back on the clock. But anyway, uh, neither, neither here nor there. Though the first period has come to a close. The Bombers will take a one nothing lead into the locker room. And again, not a lot of great offensive chances. It's funny. They almost curse people when we say stuff. I said, we talk about Motu, how, how cool... Uh, uh, as a cucumber, he looked and then got fooled right off the literally the next face off. I uh, give Cohen Stem credit. That's why you shoot the puck. You can't score if you don't shoot. Lee's won the face off, got it back to him a quick chance and kind of handcuffed him a little bit. Rolled off his glove behind him and Flint Flood will take the one nothing lead, seventh third of the year. That came at the 1744 mark. Flint Flood rebounds to uh, take the shot count 11 to 10 after one period of play. And I got both teams 0 for 1 in the power play, but it looks like Flint Flood. We'll get a chance with the extra tackle when we kick off the second period tonight. Well, that's going to be huge for the Bombers. Coming out with the man advantage, of course, any coach or any team wants that. But yeah, just going back to what you said, Rob, it's almost like we are jinxing the people out here. Even like we said with the shots, we saw the Asman too many shots on goal. And then right after that, next two minutes, they get five or six. So maybe it's just us. But like I said, a great game so far. Both teams came out, obviously, to play hard. Both being aggressive, finishing their checks. And honestly, right now, I think the Humble Broncos have a bit of an edge, especially on the attack. They're taking the more time on attack. They're taking a bit more time to set up. But Harmon Laser Hume doing a great job. And Flynn Flon Bombers. Great have save that he made there on Nazareth there towards the end of the period. Uh -huh. Oh, absolutely. When he got past the defenseman there. Great job there. But the Bombers still struggling a little bit, I think, to get it out of the neutral zone and get on the attack. But rather than that, I think it's been pretty even keel for most of the game. Big power play for Flynn Flon to kick off the second period tonight. Oh, I think so. I think it's uh, it's going to be a huge one. It could definitely be a difference maker, Rob. You know, like I said, when you come out with that man advantage, they have the best power play in the league, best penalty kill in the league. They're a special teams team, and you know when they have four of the top uh, five scores on their power play unit, you know what? It's very difficult to defend against, but Humboldt did a great job so far this game, so let's see if they can do it again. We'll see what happens. Once again, it's the one goal, Cohen Semp, uh, the... 18-year-old Rajan has got his third of the year. It leaves the assist at Justin Lee's the captain at 17:44. Flintpond leads at one nothing when the Bombers lead after one period of play this year. They have a nice 12 and 0 record. So the first period's been kind. Interesting stat. Mike Reagan shared this with me at the showcase. The, uh, up until the last couple of games, anyway, the Bombers have scored the most amount of goals in the opening period, but have also given up the most in the league in the second period. Wow. It's been a lot better in the second period since Monday, since the two showcase games, and again last night. But interesting, the second period's been their tough period, and I that was really st staggering stat to me because Flintstone has done a lot of things very badly this year, but apparently the second period had given up the most goals in the league in the second compared to any other team. But again, that was a couple of games ago, but interesting thing to think about as we get ready for the second period. No, oh, absolutely. You know what? It kind of makes sense if you think about it. So, Rob, most of the time, most, most games Bombers play, they get most of their goals, three, four goals in the first period, or they get three, four in the second, and then teams usually answer right back. So you know what? It's a very interesting stat to look at, but when you're the Bombers, you're scoring most of your goals in the first and second. I don't. It's not too surprising, though. 12-0 when they lead after one, when Humboldt trails after one this year. Their record is 1-0. Uh, and oh. So Humboldt trailed after one period once all season. They're having a pretty good year, too. Great game tonight. We'll take a break. More of the opening intermission coming up for the co-op. We will chat with our Northland Sports Lynn Flon Bomber player profile. Jacob Walker having nothing short of another spectacular season. The 20-year-old out of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, joins us next right here. 1029 CFER and FlintFlonOnline.com. Clear. Northland Ford okay. proudly supports the Flin Flon Bombers throughout the SJHL season. We know that the Bombers will play tough like the Ford F-150, the toughest truck on the market for over 40 years. Northland Ford helps the community cheer on the Bombers as they work to bring a championship to the best fans in the league, and they provide you with the best selection on their lot. 
In the north, for the north, Northland Ford, the dealership you tell your friends about. Dude, how do you relax with your fridge constantly buzzing like that? What buzzing? What? You don't hear that? Hear what? Going deaf to the appliances in your home? That means it's time for an upgrade with Frigidaire and Creighton Furniture and Appliance Center. French door, side by side, single door, or even top freezer, Frigidaire has the perfect appliance for you. So stop settling for less when you deserve more. Get the fridge that you deserve with Frigidaire and Creighton Furniture and Appliance Center. You're on. Welcome to our first intermission at Northland Ford Flint Flam Bomber Player Profile. Jacob Walker joins us. Jacob having a fantastic season. Player of the Month uh, for October. I've had a few different players of the weeks. And, uh, wow, what a season for you. Is this the most fun you've had playing hockey so far? Uh, it's definitely up there. I mean, having a great start to the year. And, I mean, can't complain with it. Hopefully it continues for us. The nice thing for you is a lot of your other teammates are playing well as well. I mean, Justin Lee's an incredible year. Uh, Alexi Silvestri. Noel Hool, uh, Carter Anderson, the list goes on and on. They built a nice group here again, haven't they? That's a great group. I mean, growing up, uh, most of us were always guys on the team that if you didn't have three points a night, I mean, your team was going to lose. But now in juniors, you got a whole team that's really good. And it, it's good not really to have a night off, but other guys are stepping up and scoring goals as well. Well, 17 one and one the number one team in the country. I mean, I, I think people expected you to be a competitive team, but... Uh, has it gone beyond expectation for you to start this year? Uh, I mean, I don't think so. I think I think this group knows what we're going for, and we're all motivated, and and we know what we're capable of. So 17-1-1, if I would have said that to you before the year, you would have believed that that was possible? I mean, why wouldn't it be possible, Rob? But, I mean, it's obviously a great start for us. Uh, I mean, we are, we're not losing. We're winning, uh, keeping it rolling, and, and that's all you can ask for. Boy, this team looks good. I mean, the showcase, I mean, fantastic wins of 8-1-6. Well, and then you follow that up with a 5-1 victory against the Humboldt Bronco team here last night. And I, for one, was really interested in last night's game. Not so much the fact that Humboldt's good, which they are. But you play a couple of, uh, let's, mediocre teams, so to speak, right now. You go to a team that plays a lot more systems and stuff. It looked like to me, at least last night, it, found it uh, took a while for you guys to kind of get your feet underneath you. Yeah, it was a, it's a lot different playing these guys. They're a lot faster. I uh, move the puck a lot better. Um, it's, it's, I, I think it's a lot more fun playing teams like this. And when it's faster hockey, it's, it's just so much more fun to be part of. And when we play the lower end teams, it's, it's, we got to dictate the pace instead of playing down to their levels. When you play these better teams, do you get a little bit more, uh, more uh, butterflies in the stomach for these bigger games against these uh, prolific opponents? Uh, you could say so. Uh, I mean, it, it's a lot more pressure on you. You know who you're going against, but uh, it's to me, it's a lot more fun playing these bigger games. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, it was a great win last night, but they say it's always tough to beat the same team back-to-back. -back. You know they're going to make adjustments. Uh, if, you're gonna, if you have to be better tonight, what do you have to do a little bit better if you want to make sure you get this game here tonight as well? Uh, I think we just need to manage pucks a bit better. Uh, the turnovers at the blue lines were killing us last night, and I think if we just keep it simple... Get the, get the pucks back behind their D and go to work, uh, that's what will make us successful tonight. Well, last night was really a, a, a nice uh, bonus for you because, like you said, you are kind of uh, threw the puck away a few times and didn't have your best first period, but you still found a way to score five goals on a good hockey team. Yeah, I mean, we, we've had that a few times this year where we come out a little flat in the first period, but we're a mature group and we know what we're capable of and we just got to turn it up and believe in ourselves that we can get the job done. Big year for you. You've already got the scholarship. You've already been to a Centennial Cup. Is it winning the league? Is that what's driving you right now as a 20-year-old, really established hockey player in this league? Absolutely. There's anything less will be a disappointment. And I'm assuming that's probably why you chose to come back to football this year, but you probably could have uh, had other options, I'm sure. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, I told all my buddies back at home that it's our year. We're winning it, and, and I, that's all I can say to them. Did you do anything different in the offseason to prepare for this year, your last year of junior hockey? Uh, no, I kept it pretty much the same. Uh, gym and staying on the ice, uh, pretty pretty normal compared to all the other guys. But, uh, I mean, yeah, that's about it. How important is conditioning? Uh, it's very important. I mean, coming into Flint Flon, uh, I'd say it wasn't that well conditioned, but we did this little conditioning camp with Mike before uh, camp started, and, and that really got us going. That makes a really big difference, doesn't it? Absolutely. I mean, early in the year, when you, the difference between guys is usually the conditioning. The guys that are conditioned can play play the way they want to play, and 
and can last a little bit longer out on the ice. This team scores a lot of goals, no doubt about it, but I think it's safe to say there's more to this team than just offense, right? Yeah, we, we're, we are very good defensively as well. Uh, I mean, that's what offense comes from is your defensive play, and, and we're very strict on being good defensively. He came in this year as a 20-year-old, like we said, a lot of success. What was Mike's expectations from you? And, and, what, and uh, I'll make it a two-part question. Mike's expectations and the expect, expectations you had for yourself. Uh, both have high expectations. Uh, we, we both had the expectation of coming in and having a mindset of I'm a goal scorer, not just a playmaker. Uh, kind of having a McDavid mindset of shoot pucks. Uh, I can score from everywhere. I can I can contribute in all all different types of ways and then for myself it would be I mean I can score goals as well I haven't had that many goals in the last two years but I mean to just shoot the puck more and more goals should be going in well like, like I talked to you about before I still go back to that shootout goal you scored at the Centennial Cup I hope you got that on video someplace you need to set that out that's and I've watched a lot of hockey at a lot of different levels a lot of different leagues and I don't know if I've ever seen a sweeter move than that Oh, it's something I was just messing around with out on the bunk here in Flin Flon, actually, and figured it out. But, uh, yeah, it's just something you kind of mess around with. And, and I mean, no one stopped it yet, and hopefully it works again sometime. What's, I mean, that's obviously high stakes, the Centennial Cup. I mean, that's uh, to basically get to the playoff round. What's going through your head? Uh, I'm just hoping at that point that catch the goalie sleep and he's not expecting it. I mean, with what I did, I who, who's going to expect that at the Centennial? That's a big moment for you. You've had a lot of big moments. If you had to pick the pivotal moment for you in a bomber uniform, what would that be? Can you can you narrow it down to, to one or two for me? Uh, I would say either the penalty shot of the Centennial Cup or the game four overtime winner right. against Battleford. And I turned the whole season around. It it changed a lot for us. It certainly did, Jacob. But uh, thanks for this uh, continued success for you and the team. It's a fun team to watch. Like I said, 17-1-1. Number one team in the country, but still so much more to play for. And should be an exciting test again. The Humboldt Broncos is a good team here tonight. So thanks for this. Good luck the rest of the way. Absolutely. Thank you. Jacob Wackler, our Northland Ford Flint Flon Bomber player profile here on 1029 CFAR and Flint Flon Clear. For a limited time at McDonald's, enjoy a tasty breakfast trio. Your All right, sir. Sausage, bacon, or chicken McMuffins with a hash brown and a small premium roast coffee for only $5 plus tax. Available before 11 a.m. at participating McDonald's restaurants in Canada. Plus, Ten seconds on every order with the My McDonald's Rewards exclusively on the McDonald's app. Redeem points for your McDonald's favorites like McFlurries, McChickens, and more. Download the app today. You're on. And welcome back to the Whitney Forum. We're just about set to get rolling here in the second period. Rob Hart, Austin Mattis, a one nothing Flint Flon lead. They'll go in the power play to begin the second period. McDonald's out of town scoreboard. Uh, Melville, a 5-1 lead on Estevan. That's midway through the second period. Elsewhere, battle for Deeks Horans, one nothing after one. Yorkton in front of Melford again. They beat him at the showcase. They're beating him so far tonight, 3-2 after one. A no score. Kindersley, Notre Dame in the opening period here tonight. I want to congratulate both the senior half Kings and Queens volleyball teams. Both won zones. Queens hosted right here in Flint Flon. Beat Cranberry in the final, 25-14, 25-12. The Kings in Cranberry beat the Cranberry Boys team in the final, 25-15, 25-20. So I mean, folks, those teams are out the provincial. Wow, great day for sports here in Flint Flon. We'll get to the NHL scores next break. We're underway. Legal will pick it up for the Broncos. Actually, it was quit the demo miners, so there's no power play here, apparently. Something happened at the end of that period as well. So Bridger took an unsportsmanlike conduct at the end of the period, so it means we're four on four to start the period. So again, no power play for football. And didn't hear about the late penalty by Bridger. Bell, back out front. Here's a drive ripped over top of the net by Miles. A good start for the Broncos, who feel that they probably got to get the next goal. Miles will race back and pick up the puck inside his own zone. Four on four hockey for another minute 25. Miles has got it back of his own net. He'll swing that pass quickly. Behind Weagle, he goes down. Anderson looks to pick it up, but Miles will come back and grab the puck inside the Humboldt zone. Had to be careful with uh, Anderson on him. Anderson loses the net, goes down hard back in the net. There's Miles' pass to center. Picked up here by Lance here, and Anderson not happy as he skates off the ice here, uh, Austin. I wonder if he tweaked something. He went down, he goes back at the Monterey bench there, and he is, uh, he's pretty upset about something. Uh -oh. Referee comes over and has a word with him. 
Yeah, maybe he hurt himself or did something. Looks like he was a little slow getting up, but yeah, yeah. Rich goes over and says something to him after that. 59 seconds gone, just underway in the second period. The Broncos win the faceoff inside the Flint Swan zone. That's Tui. Oh, he lost the handle. Great job here by Sylvester to strip it away from. Sylvester back the other way, tried to come up front to Vocker, but Cook did a good job to get in there and interfere with that. Grabbed in the corner, though. Here's a chance for Vocker back up front. Chow walks in. Oh, he ripped it wide. What a chance that was on a terrific pass by the one and only Jacob Vocker. Boy, Chow, great opportunity there. Broncos steal it. This is Newins to center. Bouncing puck. He gets it to go. He's a, a round town check. Tried to walk in. Fired that off the side of the net. Silvestri. He'll pick it up for the Bombers, and he'll start to skate the other direction. Here's Alexi Silvestri. One hands it to Vockler. Back up front to Silvestri. Puck will roll to the front of the Bronco net. And Motu will jump on that. Four on four for another 18 seconds. NHL finals here today. Tampa Bay uh, coming back to beat Edmonton 6-4. to four. Ottawa. They win again. They beat the... Uh, Minnesota Wild in a shootout 2-1. to one. Nashville over Chicago 4-2. to two. Philly in overtime beat Vegas 4-3. Carolina over Pittsburgh 2-1. to one. The Jets a 3-2 lead on Arizona in the third. Boston's got Montreal down 4-1 in the third period tonight. Islanders on top of, uh, on top of uh, their team 3-2 uh, in the third. 18.08 to go here in the second period. 1-0 Flint Swan leaves it a goal from Cohen Sev back in the opening period. An offensive chance has been tough to come by both ways, but it has opened up a little bit more here. Bouncing puck, Bridger's under the box. And we're back to five aside. McNutt runs into his guy, Sorrell. Here's a steal by Bridger. Bridger, across the line, a quick jack shot. Rebound, he gets that on target, and Motu stopped him again. A couple of good chances there for Bridger in the penalty box. He was like a locomotive train running towards the front of the net there. Amaral back the other direction. Amaral to the slot, shoots it on target. Save made a good left pass, stopped by Laser Hume. Puck picked up by Bridger, lifted down the ice. And Robertson will race back to get this, being watched out front here by Joey Lee. Here's the big Humboldt D man, Robertson. Got that one over to a Strom. He'll redirect that into the Humboldt bench. What a chance for Liam Bridger, not once but twice. Yeah, great job by Liam Bridger. And you know what? Had that little bit of extra speed. He was pressing a little bit in the box there. So he comes out, has probably about 20-30% more than everyone else and able to try and get through. Two great shots, but Benjamin Motsu also does a great job at stopping him. Face off outside the Humboldt uh, blue line. As uh, Joey Lees lines up here against the Broncos' uh, Scott stat. Mueller leaves. Egan for Flint Swan. That's a pretty darn good fourth line, if you ask me. With uh, Hool and Leffer on the back end. Humboldt will ice it right off the face off. Egan brings a real good dimension to this line. Well, when I think with this Bombers team, you know what, as uh, Barney said, they have four lines that can play up against any team. And we kind of saw that yesterday with some of the depth going that they had. It's not only those uh, those top five or six guys. you got guys all the way down the line who can put pucks in the back of the Absolutely. Uh, Scott Stead against Leeds one more time, this time in Humboldt territory. They left them 0-2. Shots are 2-2 here at the period, 13-12 overall for Flint Juan. And Joey Leeds is going to stay in the face-off circle. Looked like he was going to leave, but he's back in there. He and Scottstad line up here. Off the face off. Grabbed by the bomber. Set back to Hool at the right point. His shot. Redirected off Miller. Went to the corner. Mueller for Flint Fawn picked it up. Knocked off the puck by Miller. Hool will hold it in. Gets it in tight here for Mueller. Mueller back in the net. Nice backhand pass out front. Knocked down here by Leffer. His shot. Blocked and rebound sent outside the zone. Hool back to get it in Flint Fawn territory. Has to... Retreat back in his own net. Nice pass to Mueller. Got a, just a piece of it. And he'll, he'll mix it up here with a couple of Broncos, including the Dean Man Sorreo, in front of the Humboldt net. And they'll uh, get those two. Uh, Mueller not happy about something again. I think this is the most uh, vocal I've seen him in a hockey game. Yeah, I was going to say, it looks like Mueller and Sorreo out there are becoming pretty good friends, having a conversation almost after uh, after every whistle. I'm sure they're getting to know each other pretty well. <laughs> 16.36 to go, second period. Holy cow, that 50-50 already up over six grand. Justin Lee's out there this time to take the face off against Lanthier. Broncos win the face off. Fool, though, knocked it down, held it in. Back out front. Here's Anderson. Nice pass off. Front Lee's chance and off the stick and 
That's the one thing about this flip Bond team again. They get the puck and they, and they move it so quickly. And for my money, Carter Anderson might be the best player in the league right now. Oh, you know what, Robin, watching him, one of the things that impresses me so much with Carter Anderson is one is his ability to protect the puck and also his ability to start and stop. And it's how so he shoots phenomenal. it, how he passes it, how he sees the ice, his speed. Boy, he's got so many great physical attributes. Bombers really fortunate to pick him up for the Western League. Van Blericon takes Leper hard on the board, so Leper will get it out. Or Willie, the puck got lost in front of the net. Ooh. Cool. Knocks his guy to the ice as he takes Van Blericon down. Look out, Van Blericon comes up, throws a, a free right hand in there on somebody. And I'm assuming we're going to get some penalties this time. Poole took Van Blericon down. He didn't like it. He got up and took a swing at somebody. I'm not sure if it was uh, who, but he, he was coming up swinging. Interesting to see, too. Who's another one of those guys who doesn't really go at it too often. So it's uh, this Humboldt team doing a real good job of really getting under the skin here. Well, you got to think about it. It's a, it's a playoff atmosphere out there tonight. Oh, absolutely. Oh, no penalty somehow. But we'll continue with five aside. 16-14 to go in the second period. The face stop back. In the flip bond zone, the left to Harmon Laser Hill, last there against Justin Leaves. And they drop the puck, the Broncos win it, comes right back to Tui. Tui shot, knocked down in front. Here's Justin Leaves for flip bond. Back the other direction, picked up by Anderson, looking for room down the left side, took a good body check by Tui, couldn't get in tight. Puck goes to the back of the Bronco net, Semp is there, he's got the goal, but I kicked it free to leave. Leaves back to the net. We'll swing it back out to the right point. Chow waits for it. Chow in tight for Leaves. Looking for some room. Leaves to the slot. Leaves a backhander. Scores! What a picture of beauty! Justin Leaves hammers home the backhand. And the football Bombers will take a 2 nothing lead. You tell me any NHL arena, any hockey arena anywhere, where that's not a highlight reel goal. Oh, absolutely, Rob. The way he's able to maneuver his body through those two defenders. Oh, that was beautiful. Oh, and the, the little crease he had, able to put it up backhand, just get it right over the goalie. Wow, what a goal that was. Justin Lees is 15th of the season, and at least for the time being, has now got him tied with Dugay of Belfort for the most goals in the SKHL. Wow. Chow should get an assist on that. As the Broncos come right back after the goal, they're inside the football zone. Newman's a quick chance. Good save there by Laser Hill. He'll grab that and hang on. And yeah, what a great job there by Justin. Lee's though, just, you know what? I saw him going for it. Saw the opening. It was one of those shots you see. You don't know if it's going to go in, and if you do, it's amazing. So Lee's tied for the league lead now with uh, Dugay of the Melford Mustangs. He had 15 coming in tonight, so he and Lees are now tied. Belford, of course, is playing. I have to wait and see if Dugay's got a goal, but at least, like I said, for now, tied for the league lead. But what a goal by Justin Lees, the captain. Flipbone jumps out two to nothing here. But lots of hockey left to go, though. 15-25 to play in the second period. Hughes will knock this down for the Broncos at center. He loses an edge, and he goes across the line here. Gets it in tight for Newens, the Bronco captain. Newens along the left wall, back up front. Oh, it's an E-man shifted ahead. Nobody there. Oh, what a save by Lazio. Rebound. That gets blocked. Picked up here by Walker. What a stop again by Harmon Laser Hume. Oh, fantastic goaltending for him the past couple of nights. Broncos will dump it back in. Played in the corner that time by Walker. Here's a pass quickly to Silvestri at center. Silvestri across the line. That didn't miss by much. Boy, Motu really slow to react on that. Humboldt gets it, they come back the other way. Miles to center. Miles fights off a check. Back across the bomber line. Miles has it. Looking for somebody to give it to. Makes his way back to blue line. Shot partially blocked by McNutt. Close to the corner. McNutt will get it back. Up the left side, looking for Silvestri. He'll pick it up at center and hammer it in. Linesman goes down as Ashton Paul goes to pick it up back in the net. I don't know why that is, but fans always cheer when an official hits the ice. Explain that to me. How's that funny? No, I have no idea. Out in the corner. Bombers work it back to McNutt. Here's a long shot by Bourgeois. Kicked out by Motu. Big rebound. Goes to the corner. But Bon will try to converge on him, but Spencer Bell gets it for the Broncos, and he'll back it off the boards and throw it back across the bomber line. McNutt going back to pick it up. Back of the net. Had to be careful. A couple Broncos on him, but turned the corner nicely. Here comes McNutt to center. McNutt across the Bronco line. Drops it back. Ashton Paul. Paul back out front. There's a chance off the crossbar. What an opportunity by Olafson. Motu never even saw it. Broncos come back the other way. Amaral the center. 
Not close to being 3 nothing. Boy, a great chance there for uh, the Bombers. Uh, Olofsson. Broncos come back to the way they jam it in at the side of the net. Humboldt scored. They get it in tight. They get the puck at the side of the goal. And jammed in here by Amaral. And Humboldt's on the board there, Austin. It's 2-1. to one. Well, and there's those second period goals we were talking about earlier during the intermission, Rob. The, the, what's been killing the Flintstone Bombers team throughout the entire year. So, finally, Humboldt gets their first one in the second period. But still, not a bad job by Hartman Laser Hume. Looks like he just kind of lost where it was there for a second. They're able to wrap it around the back and then he'll just shove it in there. Well, you also got to get, you, he had too many opportunities, like you said. So, Amaral will uh, get the goal. That's his sixth of the year. Strom will get the assist. And Humboldt right back in it at 2-1. to one. So a big goal by Amaral. And funny how bounces go. Olsen had just hit the crossbar in the sequence before that. Yeah, well, it just shows in this game, Rob. You know what? Any shot you take could be a possible goal. So it's uh, both teams pretty fired up right now. It's just hopefully Humboldt is uh, going to be able to use this energy that they just got. 13-18 to go, 2-1. The two teams trading goals are in the second period. Off the faceoff, David for the Broncos to center. In over the Flint Flawed line. Knocked away here by Leper. Cook, though. Quickly back in his own blue line. Hammered that off the glass. Got it back inside the Flint Flawed zone. There's Fools spinning away. Along the board, Flint Flawed can't clear. Cook held it in. Cook from the blue line. Let's that one rip over top of the bomber net. Here's Egan. Nope, couldn't pick it up. Broncos get it to the blue line. Now it comes out. And grabbed here by Noah Hool. Hool to the attack for the Bombers. Gets a shot away. Stick save made here by Motu. Mueller will follow that one in. He's tied up back of the net. Mueller and Egan both try to go to work. Lee's in there as well, but it's the Broncos who come away with it. Intercepted by Leffer outside the Bronco blue line. He read that perfectly. He'll flip it back in. The Bombers will make changes. Here's Cook. Up the right side looking for Hughes. Way too far. Gets the shot away after the whistle goes, and the Bombers don't like that. But I think it's tough when you're uh, racing down there. Uh, you're in shooting mode here. I don't think he did that intentionally at all. That's just your, your natural instinct to do that. No, exactly. I don't think he meant anything by it, you know, especially in a game like this. Like you said, playoff atmosphere. You see the net, you see the opening, you're probably going to take a shot. Shot favorite the Broncos, 7-6. to six. We're dead even at 17 apiece. 12-24 to go in the second period. A 2-1 flip one lead. Justin Lee has got to go ahead goal. Gets it right back to Anderson. Shot got blocked that time by Miles. And down the ice it goes. It should be another icing call against the Broncos. It is as Chow will touch up. And they got the heavy artillery out there again. Lees, Anderson, Sim. Both goals courtesy of this line here tonight. Great job by the Broncos there to get in front of Carter Anderson in that high spot area. That's one of his favorite spots to shoot from. And with a skilled player like that, uh, great job by Humboldt to stop that. Lees wins the draw again. Anderson has it. He'll motor back the blue line. Now he'll take off. In the corner it goes to Sim. Somehow gets it back to Chow who was covered. Here's Tanchuk. Back of the goal for Anderson. He's interfered with penalty coming up against Humboldt. Chow's got a hit shot. And he'll let that one rip over top of that. Here's a shot from an off angle. Motu stops that. And now, look out though. Anderson looks like he's hurt here. He got drilled back of the net. Left his stick out there. And he uh, is at all times of discomfort as he makes his way back to the bomber bench. Oh, yeah. Looks like he might have been grabbing his side or his shoulder there. And just and not, not the play you want to see from the humble Broncos, especially seeing someone get hurt on an interference call. Just very unfortunate. Hopefully, Hiss has the wind knocked out of him. Anyway, a flip on bomber power play coming up. Anderson, like we said, got... Uh, Hit behind the net, interference penalty being handed out here to Weagle, the D-man. Here's Hool at the blue line. Pitches it off. Bockler couldn't quite shoot it. Feeds it back to blue line again. Hool will knock it down. Here's Bockler. Side of the goal. Back up front one time and they score! Alexi saw that great. And the Bombers retake the two-goal lead. That took all the 13 seconds on the power play. And a big goal by the flip one Bombers to restore the three, uh, restore the two-goal lead. And Alexi Silvestri, the top point getter in the SJHL, entering play here tonight. What a year Silvestri's had, leading everybody in the league in points. And he will pick up his 13th of the year and his 33rd point. What a year he's having. Wow, yeah, that, that entire line in general just, you know what, they switch back and forth between point leaders so often, Rob. It's uh, Mike Reagan definitely enjoys having those guys on the team. 
Bombers right back again after the goal. They're starting to come now. Yes, from the sharp angle. That gets missed by Buck by Paul. The Bombers pouring it on here with a 3-1 lead. Justin Lees gets another assist, and Jacob Buckner will pick up another point. And the Flint Flom Bombers back in business 3-1. We hope that Carter Anderson's okay. But the Bombers do make the Broncos pay. That took all the 13 seconds of the power play. Bryson back of the bomber net throws it up front. Flint will put it in their own net. Oh, it's been oh, whacked out of the air. Made a great play there. Bell knocked it down. His shot blocker saved. Grabbed here again. Fired on target by Van Blericom. And where is the puck? Nobody seems to know where it is. And Olofsson is tied up here. The fans react to that. Where'd the puck go there? Oh, I think uh, after Paul Blocker, he had his equipment. Some great chances there by the Broncos. You know what? Bombers get a goal, but right back on and the other end. And not good. Anderson is making his way to the dressing room. Oh, boy. This would be a huge loss. Hopefully it's nothing too major. He's, at least he's going on his own accord, but looks like J-Rock's going to go see what's up. Oh, wow. Not something you want to see if you're the Flint Fawn Bombers. He is not happy at all. He ripped the door, and you remember he went down hard back to that earlier in the game. So you maybe think something happened then and re-irritated? I don't know, but I'll tell you right now, that's a big loss. 10.50 to play, second period, Flint Fawn up 3-1, but Carter Anderson, one of the top players in the league, has left the game with some sort of... Uh, Injury or equipment problem, but I think if it was equipment problem, he probably wouldn't have been that upset when he left the ice. We'll have to see how uh, what happens here throughout the evening, and hopefully he can come back and play. There's Alexis Silvestri. He's got the power play goal. He'll rip that up and hit somebody on the humble bench. That's blown down with 10.27 to go. Uh -oh. He's mixing it up here with Amaral and Miller. The Rumble? Hey, go ahead. So this humble Broncos team really doing a good job of getting under this game. Yeah, even now Alexi Silvestri, Noah Houle, Rock Mueller, all these guys who are pretty calm and tame guys. They're uh, starting to get a little reactive here. 3 1 foot fun leads at midway point of the hockey game. 10 27 to go, 50 50, well over 7,000 bucks. Austin Mattis put his thinking cap on. He bought a 50 50 second. I did. Hey, you can't win if you don't buy a ticket. Hey, you know what? I'm, I usually buy it at the midway point of the game, and I always lose. So today I changed up the strategy, Rob. I went before the game, got it nice and early, get it out of the way. Face off inside the foot and fun zone. Jacob Bockler assisting on that last goal. Wins the face off here against Nazareth. And the Bombers get it back to center. So that's great. He'll tap that one in. There's Weagle after it around the boards it goes. Newins will kick it ahead. Newins. Gets it back to center ice. Nazareth across the line, spotted away from him. Puck comes back to center, picked up by the Broncos. Miles who gets that one back to the defenseman, Weagle. Broncos play it down the ice. It's going to roll inside the Flintflon zone. Flintflon thought it was icing. The officials thought differently. The puck is sent back to center. Weagle had trouble handling it, but he got enough of it to whack it back to uh, Miles. He fans on it. Here's Justin Lees. Back on the attack. Out front to Silvestri. Silvestri looking for a lane to shoot it. He falls down. Weagle picks it up and gets us ahead to Hughes at center. Hughes had to come back up the middle that time for Weagle. Weagle in the corner, left it back of the bomber net. That's where Newins is. Out front, nice chance there. Fired on target that time by Nasra. Nasra gets it again, and he ripped it wide the second time glove side. A couple good chances there for the Broncos. Nasra, who will pick up the puck? Football will try to move it ahead. Puck dumped down the ice. Robertson races back to get it. Icing Bombers, 9.17 to go in the second period. A 3-1 foot on lead. Nazareth comes back. It's a couple good opportunities. And let's see what's happening out of town. Notre Dame, a 2-1 lead on Kinnersley in the second period. York and Lee Belfort, 3-2 in the second. Battle for the 1-0 lead on LaRange in the second. And Melville leading Estevan 7-3. Wow, what a high scoring game. After 40 minutes of play tonight. That game at the Horizon Credit Union Center in Melville. Doug Johnson's team flying high. They beat the, uh, the Broncos at the showcase on uh, Tuesday. And they're looking pretty good in this game tonight. Here's a chance for the Broncos off the bar. Bryson with a crossbar of uh, making it a one-goal game. You can hear that one up here. Yeah, both teams just having unreal shots right now. You know what? Both going at it. So many crossbars, so many shots hitting the both on both ends. Uh, Got to give credit to the goaltenders, even though, you know, they're not really doing too much on that, but still making some great stops. Now yeah, we've had a crossbar both ways. Media timeout. Let's take a break. This is Creighton Furniture Flint Flon Bomber Hockey once again here on 102.9 CFAR and Flint Flon Online.com. Claire, Bailey.
Sweet Homes provides a ready-to-move home insurance for you and your family. From the expertise in the planning, the quality of the build, and the care of the move, let Bailey Homes make your dream home a reality. All customized to fit your needs, they allow you to take the stress out of home construction and spend more time making everlasting memories. Family owned and operated with experiences in the north, visit bailey-homes.ca or call 204-903-5220. With the weather getting colder, we all wish we could be on vacation. But imagine if you could get the same comfort of a vacation from your own home. Well, now you can with Creighton Furniture and Appliance Center. Let your mind go free and let all your stress unwind on one of their amazing sofas, sectionals, love seats, or recliners. So relaxing, you'll fit. Ten seconds. Vacation. And with a wide selection of brands and styles, there's something for everyone. Don't let the cold weather stop you from relaxation. Take a trip to Creighton Furniture and Appliance Center and start your staycation today. You're on. 9.07 to play, second period, a 3-1 Quinn Fawn lead. A big power play goal by Alexi Silvestri here. Has given the Bombers a two-goal lead. Is there looking for more? Here's Egan. Oh, he had Lees behind the D, just a little bit too much ahead of him. Lees will follow in, but the puck is knocked away that time, courtesy of Lampier. And he'll feed it over to Bryson. Bryson at center. Back across the bottom line. Hangs on. His shot. Blocked by Hull. But Fong can't clear. They'll get another opportunity. Brock Miller will dump it back to center. Puck cut that one off. Right back to Van Blericom. The Broncos leading score, but it rolls off his stick. Leper back in his own net. Flint Fong will move it quickly. That's picked up here by Egan. Dropped it back to Leper. Nice pass to center to Mueller. And he'll flip that puck back inside the Humboldt zone. There's Tui. Off the boards. Bunny hop, but picked up by Bryson at center. Bryson of the Broncos throws it towards the front of the bomber net. And Harmon laser Hume down. He'll make the save and hang on. 13-9. The Broncos out shooting Flint Fawn in the second period. They're out shooting Flint Fawn so far. 23-20 in the game. Again, you're not accustomed to seeing the Bombers getting out shot in a hockey game. No, usually, like you said, it's usually double the shots for uh, the Bombers compared to the opposition. But it just goes to show how offensively strong this Humboldt team is. Amaral will take the faceoff against Justin Lees. Lees has got a goal tonight as well. Broncos with the faceoff. Miles' is shot. Stemp blocked that. Rebound picked up. And flipped wide that time by Amaral. Humboldt trying to get the big four check going. They'll rip that one out front. Tapped away by Semp. And this will force Miles back inside his own zone. He fanned on it. Semp with the steal. Semp back of the Bronco net has it. Will they make the pay on that uh, tough defensive miscue? That's far on target. Picked up by Pichinito. Pichino for the Bombers, back to that center's out front to uh, McNutt. McNutt, quickly over to Bourgeois. He'll get it in tight this time for Semp. He's got a goal tonight as well. Grabbed in the corner by Justin Lees. He can move. Oh, knocked away. Good defensive play that time by Bell. Forces Lee all, Lees all the way back in his own zone. Buck Hammond off the boards, back in the Flint Fawn zone, and icing against the Broncos. And how many times we talked about turnovers here tonight? We go whipped on that one, and Flint Fawn got a couple of good chances. Yeah, like you said, this is what Scott, Scott Barney said in that interview before the game. It's the mistake that's going to do it to them. That's what we saw yesterday. They're lucky today. They haven't had as many uh, as many mistakes, so Bombers aren't scoring as much. But if they keep giving that kind of stuff up, you never know what could happen. Face off back in, in Humboldt territory again to the right of the goaltender Motu. Flint Fawn in front, 3-1. The Broncos win the draw. Amaral, oh, he got drilled. Good body check by Bridger. The lead action called across the Humboldt line. And, of course, a big part of the game story is the loss of Carter Anderson tonight. Cannot stress how big that is. He got hit in behind the Humboldt net. Got to the Bomber bench and all kinds of discomfort. Has left the game with the Bomber trainer. The Bomber trainer is back. I don't think Anderson came back out, did he? No, I haven't seen him yet. So we would have seen, we would have seen Anderson skate out here. Trying to see if I can spot him on the bench. No, we want to see him skate out there. He's not going to be able to go up in behind like the trainer did. He'd have to come out across on the ice. So Anderson looks like his ice done. Big loss. Here's Ashton Paul. Trying to feed that back up front to Ola. So maybe he can come up for the third period, I guess. We'll see. Here's Bridger. Ahead to Ashton Paul. Across the Bronco line. Knocked away, but right on the stick that time of Ola. So gets it back to Paul. Shot in under the glove of Motu. He'll grab it and smother it. 6.41 remaining. In the second period, 23 21, the shots in favor of Humboldt. But it's the Bombers with a 3 1 lead. Semp, Lees, and Silvestre. The Bomber goal scorers tonight. Amaral, the lone goal here for Humboldt. 
As the Bombers lead at 3-1 with 6.41 to go in the period. Lee steps to the faceoff deep in Humboldt territory, digs in, wins the faceoff. They throw it from the Humboldt net. That's grabbed and fired out by Robertson. Will cut that off at his own blue line. Noah Hull puts the left then left went back to him. A little bit out of his reach, but he'll get a hold of it, hammering off the boards. Broncos send it back in. Hull back to that, being watched here by Strome. Look out. Bombers almost pop it up in front of their own net, but here's Lee. Lee's caught it up, but goes down. Strome gets a chance and gets the shot on net. Lee's with him there to take it away. You don't see Justin Lee's give up a puck very often here, Austin. He did there, but his goaltender bailed him out. Yeah, he usually has great puck protection, but there just, you know, gave it up a little bit and put the humble Broncos in a great position to score in that slot area, but luckily, Harmon Laser Hume, he was there, he was ready, and now it looks like we got some extracurricular activity going on after the whistle here. Yeah, he wasn't happy about it. He came back, and they were jogging each other pretty good in front of the net. 6.15 to go, but... But a game of turnovers both ways, but both teams have got such good goaltending and have been able to recover. We saw the play by Miles there. For Humboldt, he coughed it up and at least moments ago got it knocked off his stick, but Harmon Laser Hume dialed in again tonight. No doubt about it. Here's Noah Hull. Gets the puck out. Grabbed at center ice this time by Hughes and fired back at football territory. There's Lepper. Good looking young defenseman out of Brandon. Over to Vockler. Can't get it to, to go. It's intercepted at center by Newell. Then he loses the handle back to Walker again. Walker, those sweet hands, gets the shot away. Blocked. Broncos moving ahead to Newell. Newell's pocket pick yet again by Silvestri. Boy, neither one of these teams can hang on the puck for very long. Here's Hughes the other way. He gets the shot away. Great save that time, Laser Hume. Rebound quickly grabbed here by Hool. Up the board for Silvestri. Taps it ahead to Bakker. He's got leads with him. Bakker. Oh, he tried to throw it out front, but the defenseman just got enough of it to knock it off target. What a play by Robertson. He got leads racing down the wing. And you know he tried to get it there, but uh, Robertson was able to redirect it to his goaltender. Yeah, what a series of passes by the Bombers there. Off the board to the neutral zone. And he gets there and tries to put it across for Lee's. Like you said, great defensive play by the Broncos, but some great passing there by the Bombers. Boy, what a game again here tonight. Two tremendous hockey teams, great action, both ends of the ice. And uh, you heard both coaches comment, and you heard a number of the players comment on it. They would like to play uh, this type of hockey 50 sometimes a year. Really brings the best out of each other. Broncos will carry the puck back in football territory. Van Blericon back of the bomber net. Very dangerous. Their leading score, like we mentioned, but he can't hang on to that one. Puck comes back to blue line. Fired on target that time by Cook. And a nice glove save by Laser Hume. 17 shot of the period by Humboldt. I was say, Harmon Laser Hume looking real sharp this period. Reaction time is looking real solid. And big credit to the Bombers. You know what you mentioned? Van Blericon being one of their top guys. Hasn't seen him do too much tonight. Well, he's been buzzing around the depth there pretty good. But Flintbond does bear down good in their own zone. So another face off back inside the Flintbond zone, the right of Harmon Laser Hume. All of a sudden, looks like he's going to move in and take the face off against Lather off the drive. Here's Bryson Chance. Oh! Laser Hume had no idea where that shot was, but hits the net. It's 3 2, but he missed it. Lots of traffic in front. Cook shot. Blocked in front. Great right pad saved by Laser Hill. Rebound in the crease. And Laser Hill will fall on that one. And the fans giving him a much deserved ovation. Two terrific saves. Yeah, and what dexterity by him to be able to track, to track that puck and just the one bouncing off a couple guys. Quite impressive, and also great job by Adam McNutt there to kind of lay down on it, get that traffic in front to make it hard for Humboldt to put those ones away. 4.53 to go, second period, 28-23. The Broncos start to run away with the shots a little bit. But the Bombers in front, 3-1, a big power play goal again by Alexi Silvestri here in this second period. Flintbond wins the faceoff. Lee's trying to get reorganized. He's got it. Here's Lee's great move at center. The Bomber captain, one goal that I get the other shot, just missed. Oh, he just had that right to low a quarter labeled and just over top of the right pad that time. A motu, if that's on net, Austin, that's in. Justin Lee's again. Trying to come across the line. Cook got a piece of that one. Tanchuk will wind up with the puck inside the Flintflon zone. He plays this pass to Piccinino. Piccinino, a good move in center. He'll take off over the Bronco line. He's got Semp with him. Knocked away. Broncos back the other way, led by Amaral. Amaral will leap free across the bomber line. Down the wing, a shot off a stick over top of the bomber net. Here's Olofsson. Back the other way for Flint Blonde in center. 
Olsen lost it and escapes. Throws it back inside Humboldt territory. There's Miles. Off the boards, back towards the bomber blue line where McNutt waits for it. Plays that one ahead to Paul. A long shot. Moat two kicked that out to the corner. Cook. He whipped on it. Here's Ashton Paul. He'll pick it up for the Bombers. Ashton Paul has it. Back to the right point to McNutt. Let's her rip. He misses it wide. McNutt. Back up front to Bridger. A chance. And that one bounced off the stick and went wide again. We got a Bomber taken down here. Deep big body check there. Bridger taking a run. It's cold, but he missed him. Here's thrown the other way. Puts it towards the front of the Bomber. They come crashing in there. And that's going to create a bit of a melee. We got uh, Bourgeois mixing it up here with the Broncos Skogstad. And these two teams really going at one another here tonight. 325 to play off the second period. What a game. What a battle between these two uh, top tier teams. I was going to say, what an exciting game we're getting to watch right now from the amount of shots to the big hits to the stuff going on after the play. Like I said, this is the kind of game you want to watch or call every single night. Just high action, high intensity, and high level of play from both teams. Skogstad and Bourgeois going to go to the penalty box. It'll be uh, put in a roughing minors. 325 to play. Second period. And the Bombers are front three to one despite being outshot so far tonight. 29 to 25. And like we mentioned, Rob, not too often this uh, Flint Flon Bombers team gets out shot, but it happened last night. It's happened again tonight. But you know what? You look at the scoreboard. Well, you're Mike you, you Look at that. Humboldt shoots from everywhere. I mean, they get a lot of shots because they're constantly shooting the puck. Bomber net comes off, which is too bad because Bachler's got a chance for an odd man rush down the ice. Somebody must have ran on the net and behind the play. And the Bombers kind of saying, we had possession. I guess you have to have the net back on the boards. Yeah, I guess A tough so. break there because Bachler had the puck at center, and he, he had a lot of daylight ahead of him. Oh, I, you know, with a quick skater like him, he had a few strides. And uh, going down that left side, that's definitely one of my favorite uh, points of attack for him. Anyway, the net comes off. The face-off, I think, is going to come down to outside the bomber. Bulan, they're repairing both the, the posts here, or both the pegs for the post. And a big face-off between Silvestri and Nazareth just outside the bomber blue line here tonight. Flint Swan in front, three to one. Broncos win the draw. That's Weagle who gets it back to Miles. On the tape that time to Weagle, but Vogler to take it from him. But then Vogler loses the handle. The Broncos get it back inside the Flint Swan zone. Just that. Back to Vogler. Vogler, take it down here by Van Blericom. Puck rolls deep in the bomber zone. Tanchuk back of his own net. Swings that pass to McNutt. Up the boards it goes, a little bit past Silvestri, and grabbed here inside the Humboldt zone by Weagle the D-man. Had to regroup back to his own net. He had tight coverage, but got away. Made a good play to get it back to Miles. Miles left the room to center. Miles across the bomber line. Miles hangs on. Weak shot. Set towards the front of the net. And Laser Hume will stop that. 2.41 to go. Second period, 3-1. Flint Flon in front. Yeah, great job by the Bombers there to get their six out and make that as tough shot as possible for the Broncos to take. And, of course, Harmon Laser Humans, he's been all game ready for that one, even though it had a little bit of a weird bounce. But credit to the Bomber D-men there, doing a great job of getting their six out. Spencer Bell will take the face off against the Bomber Captain Lees inside the Bomber zone to the right of the goaltender, Laser Hume. Leper for Flynn Fawn, back to Pichonito. He was tied up, so he got it back to Leper. He loses the handle back at Broncos with a steal. Got to come out front. They assume got a stick on it, knocked it to the sidewall. And Pichinito comes back to grab it. Pichinito for flip flop. The center. Pichinito. Down the right side, across the line. Pichinito. Try to look for a lane to shoot it. He'll dump it off to the sideboards here to leave. Pichinito got it deep and beat the defenseman cold, but uh, got in too tight and couldn't get a shot away. There's a steal there by the Bronco D man, Sereo. He takes it away, and he'll get a hold of it. Hits the uh, official with the puck as it rolls back inside the foot flan zone. Leper back of the net, wrapped it around the boards. Robertson waited for it. Intercepted, held it back in foot flan territory. Under two minutes to go. Lampert blows the tire. Here comes Leper for foot flan. The lead pass to Justin Lees. Goes back to center, throws it back up the middle. Intercepted this time by Bell. Bell will flip it inside the foot flan zone. Laser Hume stops that, leaves it back of the net for the bomber defenseman Leper. Leper will start things off from there. Swings the pass ahead. Olofsson loses it to Bryson. Now Newen's inside the Flint Flon zone. Newen fights off a check back of the goal. He hangs on. 
Poole tried to take it from him. Newland's got it back. Back out front. Took a chance. Oh, and I think that went off the end of Laser Hume's stick. He got a piece of it. And the Bomber defense coughing up the puck there a couple times on their own zone. But as we've seen a lot in the last couple of games, Harmon Laser Hume there to bail them out. And as we talked about earlier on in the game, Rob, Harmon Laser Hume really showing up in these big games. And he did it last night. He's doing it tonight right now. Really saving the Bombers on some of those turnovers. 120 to go in the period. Uh, Humboldt's uh, taking it to Flint Flom right now. The Bombers kind of hanging on, but they do win the faceoff. Here's Olofsson again in the center. Off the boards, he'll get the puck in deep. There's Tui. Oh, Olison drilled him good in the corner. Broncos bring it up the ice, so Amaral. Back to center ice, here's Newins. Across the bomber line, hangs on, his shot blocked. Picked up quickly, referee goes down again. Boy, these referees have had a real tough time here tonight. They've been falling all over the place. Here's Ashton Paul for Flint One. He'll knock it down, he takes a look, and he'll skate with it. Ashton Paul, ahead to Olison, and he'll get it and flip it back in Humboldt territory with 47 seconds to play in this opening period. Cook takes the pass. Off the boards, back in football territory. Here's McDuck to Aiden Chow. Off the boards, nice pass to Lees. He'll dump it the rest of the way with Egan racing after it. Egan going after it in the corner, knocked away from him. Puck picked up and slapped down the ice by Strom. And we got penalties coming up here again, I think, do we not? Or maybe. Not sure what's going on here. I think maybe somebody hit ahead with a glove pass or something. Broncos are kind of arguing why the plate was blown down. Yeah, I was wondering the same thing. 26 seconds to go. Face off will come outside the Bronco blue line. Joey Lees, Pat Egan, and Brock Mueller, the forward group. Bombers win the draw. Joey Lees, again, that big goal for them in the third period last night. Gets the puck in deep. Broncos have it. This is Weagle. Quickly outside his own zone. The center falls down. Puck, though, rolls across the bomber line. Here's Bourgeois. Ahead to Egan. Eight seconds to go. Egan shot. A long one goes wide. Here's Mueller after it from a sharp angle. Motu stops it. And that's why you always shoot the puck because you never know. Absolutely. And you could tell Motu, it looks like he really wasn't paying too much attention. You never know. Those uh, those line shots right there on those weird angles, sometimes those go in when they're not paying attention. And right there it almost did. But Motu looks like he was able to save that one pretty good. Looked like it kind of caught him off guard, though, didn't it? Oh, absolutely. I really don't think he was ready for it. Still got some time here. 4.4 seconds to go to face off in the Humboldt zone. Justin Lee's out there. Wins the draw. Back to point. They're going to drive. And that's blocked in front here by Strom Ooh, he's in all kinds of discomfort but again 4.4 seconds a lot can happen oh you know what I just said but right there you saw that could have been a huge shot there for the Bombers but Strom is hurt but what a shot block he might have saved a goal oh you know what knowing how great of a shooter he is uh, absolutely but Strom he's paying for it now you can see he's in mass discomfort after taking that one right to the stomach so the Humboldt Broncos do get a goal but Flint Swan gets two more they'll take a 3-1 lead here after the second period, but at what cost, Austin Mattis, again, Carter Anderson going down there in that second period and has left the game. Yeah, you know the only good thing I can say out of all that is, you know, at least the Flint Fon Bomber trainer, at least he was out pretty quickly after they went in, so hopefully it was nothing major. But, yeah, not something good for the Flint Fon Bombers. Luckily, they have tons of great scorers on the team, so, you know, they have tons of other guys who can get goals. But, you know, we've been talking about how great of a player Carter Anderson is. He's a northern guy from Thompson, one of those great guys that I love having on the team. So just very unfortunate to see him get hurt, especially off a penalty when it was the interference behind the net. So just very unfortunate. Lengthy interview coming up with Roy Burgoyne, so an exciting second intermission for the co-op straight ahead. We'll take a quick break. We'll come back to the second period scoring summary and the second intermission show. So far, so good for the Bombers. They lead it 3-1 on 102.9 CFER and flipflonline.com. It's Claire. I love to head to Shane's. Six. Deals are not just on Black Friday anymore. Oh, it's there. I always know I'm going to find the perfect thing I really want. Getting the things I want on Black Friday deals, pure magic. Wow, look at the Black Friday deals. Love that party speaker. I've always wanted one of those. Tablets and laptops, furniture, oh, and appliances with huge deals. I love shopping at Shane's. So convenient at the right price for the stuff I want and need. Shop Black Friday with Samsung and Shane's in the paw at the Attenica Mall. It's on now until next Saturday. See you shopping at Shane's.
Northland Ford proudly supports the Flin Flon Bombers throughout the SJHL season. We know that the Bombers will play tough like the Ford F-150, the toughest truck on the market for over 40 years. Northland Ford helped the community cheer on the Bombers as they work to bring a championship to the best fans in the league, and they provide you with the best selection on their lot. In the North, for the North, Northland Ford, the dealership you tell your friends about. And uh, here's a stick I found in the yard, and that's my show and tell. <sighs> Very good. Next. I'm showing and telling the Nuggets from KFC. Oh, this is so much better than mine. You, quiet, carry on. Original recipe nuggets from KFC. Mouth-watering morsels, crispy on the outside and juicy. Ten seconds. White meat on the inside. That's what I call an A+. Even better than an A, KFC. So good. You're on. And we're back at the Whitney Forum. Rob Hart, Austin Mattis, the second period scoring summary. Justin Lee's the captain. His uh, 15th of the year. The tie uh, Duge uh, for the Mustangs for the overall lead. Chow, the assist that came at 413. Bombers in business 2 0. Uh, Amaral comes back to some hard work at the side of the bomber. And Eddie jammed it in. His sixth of the year from Strom at uh, 638. But Flipflon quickly comes back on the power play. A one for two with the extra attacker. Alexis Sylvester, a terrific pass from. The captain, Justin Lees, he's not going to miss from the slot. He gets his 13th and restores the two-goal lead at the 8-12 mark. Uh, shots in that period, 15-12 Broncos. Humboldt, a two-period total of uh, 32. Flint on a two-period total of 26. And I got Humboldt 0 for 1 in the power play. Flint on 1 for 2. And uh, we'll take a quick break, come back with Rory McGorn. But quickly, uh, Austin, uh, at what cost uh, Carter Anderson went down and... Uh, Here's hoping it's not too serious. I think that's the best we can hope for is just hopefully he didn't get hurt too badly out of that. If he misses a game or two, you know what, it's not the end of the world. But being the same position the Bombers were in last year in the second part of the season, having about six, seven guys injured no about 24-7. I know Mike Reagan doesn't want to be put in that position again. So hopefully we can pray for the best. But regardless, despite the injury, I think pretty solid second period for the Flint Flon Bombers. And the Bombers are 15-0-1 when they lead after two this year. The Broncos, they trail after two, 0-2-1. Oh, two we'll see what happens. Should be an interesting third period. Rory McGorin, the premier voice of the SJHL, joins us next here on 102.9 CFER and FlintFlonOnline.com. Clear. Mustang is proud to be a sponsor of this game of broadcast. From donations for bursaries, hockey schools, clubs, community events, charities, and so much more, HUD Bay has supported our community with dedication and generosity, contributing to events and organizations. HUD Bay thanks the people of Flint Flon for their continued support. The North of 53 Co-op has everything you need to make the most elegant feast, that quintessential family meal. How about a company's coming over lavish spread and that perfect just-for-yourself delicacy? But there are also days where you need the co-op to take care of things for you. Ready-made meals for one and family meal kits are the perfect respite from trying to do everything all at once. All Ten seconds. Freshly in-store made meals from ethnic delights to the classics. All at the North of 53 Co-op. You're at home there. You're on. Welcome to our second intermission. Great to catch up with uh, certainly the premier voice of the SJHL, Rory Bergora, joins us. Uh, Rory, got a chance to see you down at the SJHL Showcase. Uh, uh, first time for me in a long time, but I really enjoyed it. It was pretty good hockey there. That's always an event when you look at the schedule, right, where when it starts at the beginning of the season that you circle. And, uh, you know, 12 teams in one building. That was a great week. You know, a lot of... A lot of fun action being held there and warm and a lot of close games, a couple blowouts, obviously some good performances, but to get the players in front of the scouts and to put a spotlight, you know, uh, on them and on the league, it was fantastic, I thought. Well done by everyone involved. Now, you're pretty involved with the league, Rory. You have been the last few years. Uh, Kyle McIntyre, I think, is coming up in his third year as being president, uh, doing a fantastic job and surrounding with some really good people. I think the league has really made a lot of leaps and bounds the last couple of years, and you've got you're kind of got the inside track. Well, I think that the SJHL definitely headed the right direction. Yeah, you know, first and foremost, I'm obviously just honored to be asked to, you know, carry a little additional weight outside of my responsibilities with the Humboldt Broncos. So that's always an honor and a pleasure to kind of jump in and do anything that 
uh, the league wants me to help promote, but you are right, uh, especially on the social media media side, the marketing side, uh, sort of the execution and promoting the SJHL and kind of see the growth of it. It has gone leaps and bounds over the last three years. I'm really impressed with, you know, Jeremy Corrigan, Jacob Faith, Clark Monroe of IKS Media, especially Kyle as well as, as they got a machine churning along here for sure. Well, you got that very popular SJHL weekly show. I know a number of people watch that. And, and you guys, of course, are live at the draft. I, mean, you, you, I think the one thing you've been able to really do uh, with the guidance of Kyle, obviously, is really kind of be really fan-friendly. Uh, yeah, you know, that, that, that's the fun thing. Uh, you know, speaking fa- fan friendly, I forgot to mention uh, Newsy there too. So if he listens to this interview or watches hockey TV, and I, I forgot to drop his name, I'll hear about it on Monday on the show. So uh, he does a great job as well. But it's all about trying to create more fan engagement. Um, you know, you see it with your fan bases here in Flin Flon. You got the older generation, right? But if you can get that young, get that young group in, they're going to be fans for life, and and that's kind of what it's about. You got to promote. You got to have fun. You got to try to do new ways to get the league out there to people that maybe haven't been fans since 1980, right? right. And uh, that's what we're trying to do and uh, I love doing it well it's a great brand of hockey let's face it it makes your job easier when you got yeah. especially two premier teams like we saw last night the Bombers and the Broncos I know you got to see Flint Flon for the first time at the showcase and you're telling me you've been pretty happy with what you've seen yeah I would put them right up there with Battleford last year and Estevan the year before as one of the best teams I've seen in my six years in this league if not the best sample size has been 19 games so far but I, I don't think there's anything that I could take away without them being in that group so uh uh, they're going to be a force throughout the 56-game season, and if they, you know, roll in the playoffs, clearly with this roster, this might be the year, in my opinion. Well, I don't know, but we'll see. I mean, there's some other good teams. The Broncos sure. certainly, and we'll see how humble. I mean, I'm sure that you are. You, you cover the humble Broncos on a day-to-day basis. I'm sure that uh, you yourself probably wondering how does Humboldt respond tonight. You know what, I like the first period. I like the first period. I like the third period. I didn't think it was a 5-1 game last night. That's for sure. Um, four minutes in of second period, you guys score three goals. You can't give Justin Lees, Carter Anderson, you know, Adam McNutt, Jacob Buckler, Alexei Silvestri. You give them room, and, and they're going to make you pay. So I really, really enjoyed the game. I don't think you have to change too much. I thought the PK was uh, fantastic, not allowing you to use Silvestri in the bumper and try to get that secondary pass over to Anderson. Uh, you see guys like Chase Cook putting the body on the line on his two mega blocks there, shorthanded. It's, uh, you know what, I don't think there's much change. I think it's kind of stick to the game. I know they like 54 minutes of that game last night. Well, they wound up with 50 shots. Yeah. yeah, yeah, a lot of shots. Laser was uh, was dialed in. I don't know which goalie's starting. I didn't check the roster, but I heard Marquardt might be in today. No, Harmon's in. Oh, it's back to Laser Hume. Okay, well, not surprised after stopping 49 of 50, but that's been the philosophy of both these teams, right? You look at the shots on net per game. Flint Flon averages 44. Humboldt averages 41. It's first and second in the SJHL. So uh, to see the shots 50 to 43 at the end of the game, I was not surprised. But, yeah, Laser's good. And then uh, it just seems to be the knack of the Flint Flon Bombers, especially after the last three playoff series against each other. You can't get any secondary opportunities against this team. You're so good at, at collapsing in the house, at boxing out. You punish guys that go to the net, and, you know, that's how you win games defensively, and you guys do it really well. I'm going to pose the same question to you that I asked Scott Barney. You're up one nothing. You seem to have things going your way. If you bury one of those early power plays, is it maybe a different hockey game? I think if you get it 2 to nothing. I don't know if it's a different game. I mean, you guys are so powerful and high-potent offensively. I definitely think uh, it could be, yeah. Um, but again, then if you have the same four minutes in the second period, you guys are up 3-2. Right. So I think at the moment, yeah, you can look at it saying if you would have scored on that double minor high sticky and then Newins, uh, you know, got caught up top, then it could have changed the game. But you got to play 60 minutes, especially against your team and especially in this building. And if you don't do that, it could be three goals going against you quickly. We talk about Flint Flon and Humboldt. There's another big story. The Battle for Stars have reeled off oh, yeah. nine straight wins. Key and Bell, I think it's 24 points in nine games now. What is our, our first and foremost? Are you surprised that he came back to the SJHL? No, no, I'm not really surprised. 20 year old, you know, uh, they can only carry so many in the dub. And of course, uh, I know talking to Kean, he's just ecstatic to be back in Battleford to try and repeat his champion there. Uh, you know, he loves playing for Braden in Chile. Uh, he loves North Battleford and kind of the community. And, uh, yeah, what a start. Was it 24 points in 10 games, you said, or something like that? Nine, I thought, nine but games, nine, yeah. ten, whatever. Yeah, he's a special talent. And it's kind of interesting. You watch him on the ice, he might not be as, you know, fast-footed or electric as, as Carter Anderson or Jacob Bockler, but he's just so cerebral. And his hockey IQ is, you know, above and beyond anyone else that I've seen, that he puts himself in positions where goals and points are going to come. That shot is elite as any. And he doesn't have to shoot at 100 miles per hour every time because of his accuracy and placement. Kind of like a, a change-up for a pitcher in the MLB. He's so good at just throwing an off speed into the top corner, and goalies don't kind of, you know, hesitant on it. 
Looks like they're going to be a factor again. Battleford, yeah, yeah, they're uh, they're proving that their 500 start through the first 10 or 12 games or so uh, was just kind of getting that turnover after the championship. They got a lot of returning players. Let's uh, you know not say that, but they did lose, obviously, a lot of their high-octane guys, Tynan Ewart, Stephen Kesslering, Jake Southgate, Holden Dole, so, you know, about 400 points you got to replace, I just think it took a little bit of time to kind of find that identity, Battleford just found it, and they're in the upper echelon of the SJHL. And I'm sure will be uh, one of the teams that you're going to have, somebody's going to have to go through them, the other defending league champions, to uh, to win the league this year. One of the big things for me about the SJHL this year, besides the top-end teams that we talked about, which are really good, in flip on Humboldt, Battleford, the teams that have struggled the last number of years made coaching moves, and it already is paying dividends. Belleville's a much improved team. And i got to tell you, the Kinnersley Clippers, and I think I did talk to you a little bit about this Rory off the air yesterday, I had a chance to mix and mingle a little bit of the showcase as well. And the Kinnersley Clippers were one of the teams that the scouts were talking about. Yeah, uh, you know, when Doug Johnson comes back to Melville, you know they're going to be tough to play against each and every night, right, with his kind of defensive system switching it over there. Uh, they're the youngest team in the league, so I've been really impressed that they got off to such a quick start so early. But... Uh, you know, when you have a coach that can kind of preach new changes and everyone buys in, uh, you know, there's a, so many talented young players in this league, and Melville's got a handful of them. And the Kindersley Clippers, I've said it from the beginning, they're going to make the playoffs this yeah. year. I love the Kindersley Clippers and kind of what they do. Clayton Jardine has come in, uh, and he's done a fantastic job. That was just a slow start for them, which I didn't expect because, you know, you're led by guys like Logan Linklater, Tyler Hill, Big Logan Cox. These are guys that have been around the SJHL for years, and I just didn't expect that slow start. But you see now uh, points in six of the last seven games. Like, this is the Clippers team that I expected. And, you know, to be fair to Kindersley, again, they were marred with injuries last year. Yeah. I mean, they lost their top three centers. They lost arguably their top two defensemen, and uh, and Falk, the goalie, was out for a good chunk of last year, too. So, I mean, I think it's a team that uh, – Maybe not might have maybe not been a powerhouse last year, but I don't know if anybody was hurt more by injuries than they were. They were definitely hurt by injuries too. Yeah. Uh, again, I, I I think you know getting a new voice in was kind of key this year sure. for the Kindersley Clippers. I love what they're doing just on the other side of it with all the locals there, right? You have the Perlinger twins, the Hill Big Brothers, uh, uh, Logan Linklater from Kindersley. I think they have another one. So, you know, they're kind of building through that, through their leaders being local guys. And you can see their attendance is great this year. Their record is getting good. And, uh, yeah, now with just staying healthy is definitely key to kind of driving into the postseason and becoming one of those eight teams. And getting back to Melville, they've done something that nobody else in the league has done. They've beaten both Flint Bond and Humboldt. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Uh, they beat Flint Bond here, right, in regulation, your first regulation loss. And then Humboldt at the showcase. So, like I said, with Doug Johnson back there and, the, you know, those young players buying in, uh, they might not have a superstar, but they're going to be tough to beat on any night. And that's pretty wild that, you know, the youngest team in the league is the only team to beat the top two uh, veteran, you know, Flint Bond Bombers and the Humboldt Broncos. That makes you wonder if they were to score off against one of these top teams in the league, it might not be a very easy opening round. Yeah, I, it's not going to be an easy opening round, especially, you know, just with the way they play in the playoffs, I think that will even tighten up even stronger after getting 56 games of experience. Uh, they're a young team, though. So, I mean, in a four-game series, sorry, in a best-of-seven series, I would put my money on a Flint Fawn or a Humboldt, right? Uh, because they're a young team, they are learning, and I've seen what Flint Fawn can do. Obviously, I've seen what Humboldt can do. So, in a seven-game series, I would, I would lean towards uh, the more experienced teams, but I definitely, you can't overlook Melville, no matter who's lining up against them, if they make the playoffs. And a big thanks to Roy McGoran for joining us here. Uh, the play-by-play is the Humboldt Broncos. Certainly the premier voice in our league. Does a great job. Got the showcase and all the other. Uh, of course, he, if the Broncos aren't in the league final, he'll be calling that again for Max TV. And does a wonderful job and certainly knows a lot about the SKH. Always great to catch up. Love talking hockey with Rory. We're underway. And good news for Flint Flon. Carter Anderson has made his way back out. Thank God. Here's Van Blurikom. The other way is still some that's towards the front of that boy. A little scary watching Anderson go down, but he's back out there. And I'm sure Mike Reagan breathing a huge sigh of relief, too. What a fantastic hockey player he's been to compliment, of course, this great lineup. He's going to get a penalty, though. He trips up uh, Lampier. And Humboldt going to go to the power play for the second time. Walker with the steal. And you notice what he did when he stole that puck there. He doesn't shoot it into the empty net there because if he does that, Austin, he gets an unsports play penalty. That's a smart move by a veteran player. Oh, absolutely. And you have to kind of touch on Anderson being back. If there's any question about how he's feeling, so the first 20 seconds he was in there, he was already throwing hits and not really scared to throw his body around. So glad to see that he's back and doing real well, clearly. Humboldt's a good chance here early in the third period. They're on the power play for just the second time tonight. Their power play also very good, ranked fourth in the league at 21.
1.5% in the Bombers, not only the best power play, but the best penalty kill at 90%. That's incredible to have a 90% penalty kill. Julian Skews, he back to Van Blericom. As the uh, Broncos will bring the puck in, they'll rim it around the board. Clancy is there. Knock it back down the corner. Picked up back of the goal here by Amaral. Back out front, a shot. Good save, Laser Hume, Miller in front of him. Let's take a look at the McDonald's out-of-town scoreboard here tonight. The, uh, Mel it's getting close now. Melville up on Estevan, 8-6 in the oh third period. God. Boy, all kinds of offense there tonight. Battleford continues to lead. LaRange one nothing. If, if Battleford wins tonight, that would be 10 straight wins. Yorkton leads Melford 5-4 late in the second, and Notre Dame a 2-1 lead on Kindersley in the second period. 3-1, flip on in front. Here's Lanthier here on the power play. Ripped that over top of the net. Didn't miss by much. A lot of traffic in front. Lanthier will hold it in. A minute 20 to go, but that one's stolen right out front by Silvestri. Silvestri's got McNutt with him. And he'll just dump it back down inside Humboldt territory. Tui, the Humboldt D-man, goes back to get it. Here's Tui. At his blue line, drop that one back to Weagle. Weagle to center. He can move for a big D-man. Poked away from him that time, though. Good play by McNutt. Tui forced back inside the Humboldt zone. Gets it back to Amaral at center. Lee's there to take it from him. Good penalty killing here by the Bombers. But again, with a 90% penalty kill so far this year, what would you expect? Lee's back to his own blue line. Look at just the... He's able to control that puck. He'll dish it to center, pick it up, and plays it over the Humboldt line. Here's Piccinino. Piccinino throws it out front. Motu makes the save. Rebound by Bryson. He'll pick it up to center. Back over to Bell. Shot got blocked that time by Leopard. 27 seconds to go in the power play. Newens will pick it up for the Broncos. Got it back to Tui at the blue line. Newens back out front to Weagle. A little bit out of his reach. He'll get a hold of it. Dump it back of the goal. The Bell out front. Puck will skip to the point. Knocked down by Newens. Made a good move. Newens hangs on. Fires it over top of the net again. I think that hits the crossbar. Another crossbar here for Humboldt. Piccinino at center. He'll dump it down. That'll do it for the power play. And Humboldt comes close. They fire a puck off the bar, but it stays out, and it stays a 3-1 flip on lead. Back to five aside. Bryson back of the net. Here comes Bridger. Big body check gets it back out front. There's a quick shot by Olison. And Motu will take that off his chest. He'll make the save and hang on. We should mention again, Austin. A big congratulations to Senior Hatnut Kings and Queens Volleyball teams, both winning zones here today. Uh, both beating Cranberry in the final. The Queens beat uh, the uh, Raiders 25-14, 25-12. The Kings took care of business in Cranberry 25-15, 25-20. They're both provincial bound. Exciting news, and how about this? GB Volleyball Provincials in Flin Flon this upcoming weekend. And the Queens uh, won the zone. They'll go in the front door, not the back door. And the Hatton Volleyball Program takes three out of the possible four zones. So they've been so dominant across the north in that. And congratulations to the coaches and the players. Uh, a job well done here today. Bridger throws it back across the Humboldt line. Here comes Ashton Paul Lafford. He and Cook collide. Puck picked up by Miles. He took a wicked body check. He goes down hard. Taken down here by Bridger. Boy, has Bridger ever had a big game in the physical department here tonight. He hasn't uh, eased up on anybody. Ashton Paul will lift it ahead to Joey Lees. He's inside the Humboldt zone. Joey Lees will bring it in deep. Joey Lees to the blue line. Tanchuk knocked it down. Here's a shot. Deflex. Motu, I think, got his right pad on that. Miles will get it back. Miles to center. Flips it ahead to Newens. Across the bomber line. Quick chance. And Tanchuk over there to redirect that over the glass and out of play. 15-32 to go. A 3-1 flip one lead. And they are being outshot for the second straight night, 35-29. But both teams, uh, this, this is as, as good as it gets in the SJHL. A very entertaining game. And, you know, you mentioned Liam Bridger doing a great job out there tonight, making those huge hustle plays for the Bombers. Bombers win the draw quickly. Mueller will take off. Mueller to center. He'll dump it in. Live boards comes right out front. Mueller again. Oh, he almost got it to, to go in. But uh, Motu got the left pad down. Really looked like Mueller knew what he was doing there, didn't it? Miller, he was almost like the quarterback throwing at the receiver. He's being grabbed here by Robertson. They're going at each other. Robertson will pick it up. Miller, a terrific play. Bronco throw it down the ice. Chow got a hold of it, knocked it down, and takes a big body check, but gets the puck out. Miller will try to tie it up in front of his own bench. Gets free. Good move. Gets it back to Leper. Leper on his side of center has Miller with him. He'll dump the puck in. 
Dewey back to get it. Mueller beats him with a body check. Broncos get a hold of it. Bounce it off the boards down the ice. Icing called. Face off back in Humboldt territory. 14.40 to go in the period. And in the game. Yeah, Rob, this, you know, the Whitney Forum known for notoriously having those weird bounces off the off the boards there. But you know what? I feel like when you play this this arena enough, you get used to it, and you can almost make big plays like that when you know specific bounces off the certain parts of the board. So great job by Brock Mueller there, almost making an incredible play to himself. A goal and an assist for Justin Lees as he gets set for the faceoff here inside Humboldt territory against Nazareth. Broncos win the puck back down the ice. It goes. It may not be enough right thing. No, it's waved off as Leffer and Van Blutterkamp race down there. Puck will squirt in front of the bomber net. Picked up quickly here by Justin Lees. He can motor. Justin leaves the center across the Humboldt line, back out front. Here's Anderson spinning, and he just fired that one wide. Leffer will knock it down, back out front, whacked away. Oh, it stays out. What a chance for Stamp on the doorstep. Motu down, and somehow found a way to keep that puck out. That might be Motu's best save of the hockey game. Oh, for sure. You know what? And that rush was all started right there by Justin Lee's putting on a nice couple moves to get through some defenders. Tosses it off to Carter Anderson. Almost has a beautiful uh, shot there. Goes wide, and then Bombers come right back, put a few more on. But Benjamin Motu ready for those ones, and almost let one go through there. But great job by Motu to stop those. So Vestry will take the face off here against Lance here to the right of Motu, a 3-1 foot one lead 14 15 to go in this third period bombers come close again bourgeois shot kicked away that time by motu rebound comes to the blue line but not a quick chance and kicked out again by motu rebound poked out here's the broncos three on one van blurricom down the wing van blurricom hangs on and he fires it wide again well the broncos have had some good chances in the third period but they've missed the net on very way too many times Regular succession, I guess, is what I was going to say. They've had a lot of chances in tight, but they can't hit the net. And when they do, Harmon Laser Hume has been there. So Vestry. Up the boards for Picciadino. Missed it. Weagle got it. Back to Bryson. Bryson outside the blue line. McNutt took a run at him and still throw it back inside the football zone. Bombers get it around the boards. It goes. So Vestry. It's a back to Piccinino. Piccinino quickly across the line. Here's Piccinino. Dropped it back to Silvestri. Knocked away from him. Bryson back the other way. Bryson across the line. Throws it in for Van Blericon. Tan Chuck there. Along the board. Bell took it from him and brought it back in. Bell back to the bomber net. We'll hang on to it. Here's Spencer Bell. Spins it from the right circle. Shoots it. Laser Hume the save. Rebound comes out. Cook will pick it up quickly for Humboldt. He's got it at center. Ahead to Bell. Back to Bryson. Bryson has been out there a long time. Swings it back up front. Nice pass to Cook. Cook hangs on. Shoot. Scores. Cook makes it a one-goal game. Bryson out there for an eternity, but makes the great pass. And it looked like Laser who made the save, but it kind of rolled off his uh, off his right uh, hip. And Humboldt back in business, and they've come out flying here in this third period, and they get rewarded. It's a one-goal game again, Austin. Big goal there for the big D-man Cook. Yeah, they've been putting on lots of good shots. Harmon Lager Hume doing a great job being able to see through the traffic. And even there, got the initial stop, but looks like it just rolled under or rolled over his arm and ends up going in. Now it's only a one-goal game. So Cook will get the goal. That's his uh, third of the year. Miller and Bryson, the assists on the goal. And the Humboldt Broncos right back in it, making it a one-goal game. Once again, it's 3-2. And, boy, some good hustle there by Cook. Usually a stay-at-home defenseman, but he read the play perfectly, got in there, and got a good chance, and uh, it pays off. Yeah, now we definitely got an exciting game, and that's the goal Humboldt was looking for. We said, you know, they're getting the shots on net, they're getting the good opportunities, and finally they get one to fall. Geez, how big is that save that Motu made moments ago there on Seth in front of the net when he was on his back? But Bum will hold it in. Here's Bell again. Oh, he almost had Amaral set. Bombers will dump it in. Cook to, got the second goal, gets a hold of it. Lost it to Olofsson. Has to wait for his mates to get back on side. Here's Ashton Paul. Paul bumped off the play, or bumped off the play by Tui. Puck comes back to center. Bell across the bomber line, but there's Fool to cut that one off. Fool. The center kicked ahead by Tui. Here's Amaral. Good job by Fool to knock him off the play. Olofsson throws it back to the goal to Leffer. Leffer will play it ahead to Paul at center. Here's Ashton Paul. Dump again. Once again, hits the boards. Comes right back in front. But that time, Humboldt was ready for it. And Tui grabbed it. Tui. Had his own blue line. Up the middle. Nobody home. 
icing against Humboldt. 11.56 to go in the third period. And quick pace again here tonight. Boy, both these teams can fly. Yeah, it looks like the Broncos now. It looks like they're struggling a bit in the first half of this period to kind of receive those passes. They're struggling a bit on transition, but now it looks like they're starting to get back in rhythm a little bit. 7-4 on the shots in favor of Flint Fawn here in the third. It's 36-33 Humboldt so far. And, boy, there could have been a penalty against Flint Fawn there. As we had one of the Broncos tripped up here, you can hear the Bronco bench yell, but they've let a couple. Oh, look out by uh -oh. Egan. He takes a whack here at Miller as he's making his way off the ice. you got to be smart at this junction of the game, Austin. You can't take an undisciplined penalty. The referees are letting him play right now, but if somebody does something foolish here again, he's probably going to call it. I was going to say, I thought he was pretty lucky not to get a call on that one even. So you're right, especially when you're up one of the 11 minutes left. You don't need and it. Humboldt's got the momentum right now. You don't want to give him another power play. Agreed. When Bunnell throw it in, there's Robertson back of his own net around the board. Bourgeois cuts it off, throws it back out front. Here's Egan looking for the puck knocked away from him. Here's Strome. Strome for Humboldt will flip it back inside the Flint Fawn zone. Rolls wide in the net. Icing again against the Broncos, and we'll get a face off back in Humboldt territory. 11 and a half minutes to play. And get used to these tight one goal games, boy. And you, you really get the sense that these two teams are going to play in the playoffs again. Yeah, what, oh, what a series it's going to be, Rob. I'm, I can tell you I'm already excited for it. And uh, just two great teams at the top of the SJHL and the country. Just great game going on right now. Lees to take the face off here against the Broncos Skogstad. So Lees, Semp, and Anderson. Off the face off, there's Anderson digging it free. Anderson, got to come back to the blue line, then hit a leg, came out. Anderson goes down. Puck comes across the bomber blue line. Scott's dead. Falls down. Stayed with it. Puck underneath him. But Doug free here by uh, Bourgeois. Grabbed by Sorrell. He gets drilled here by Anderson. Anderson comes back and gives him a how-to. Sorrell gets back up and puts it back in. Big body check back to the bomber net that time between the uh, Broncos Nazareth and McNutt. Couple real big boys there. Puck the line. Sorrell's got a shot on target. Club save made. Carmen Laser Hume. So Anderson making his presence felt the physical department there. The guy can do it all. Yeah, well, even there down low on the in the Broncos zone, what what a way to be able to get low, get in position, and just will his way to grab that puck away. And just like you said, nothing he can't do. And even out for the one beard with the hurt shoulder or whatever it was, comes back, looks like he's on a fresh set of legs. Now for it to take the face off against Jacob Walker back in football territory. 10-49 to go. 3-2 football in front. And Walker will get waved out. Here comes Silvestri. Nice job by Silvestri to win the face off. Can Chuck quickly outside the zone looking for Piccinino. Cut off at center right, center right that time by Legal. He'll get it back in. There's Tanchuk. Around the boards it goes. Pichonito waits for it. He'll flip it ahead. Racing after it is Wachler. And Silvestri wide open in front of that, but he couldn't get it to him. Newens comes back, picks up the pass at his blue line. Feeds that one ahead here. Here comes Hughes. Down the left wall. Back to Miles. Miles to D-man. Loses the handle. Here comes Wachler. Back to Silvestri. To the trailer. Pichonito offside. Ooh. Tough break there on a great play that developed it again. Miles off of the puck up, led to that odd man rush. You turn, if either one of these teams turn over the puck, there's an odd man rush going the other way. They have so much speed. Oh, and you know, that's simply the thing, Rob. Both these teams are so good in transition. That's why it's made such an exciting game. But it looks like Piccinino was just a little too far back on that or got the pass a little too far back. And it gets the offside. And what could have been a great three-on-two break there? All of a sudden against Lanther, face up outside the Humboldt Blue Line. Football once again in front, 3-2. to 10-14 to play in the third period. Bridger can't pick it up, but Van Blericom does. He's inside the Flint Fawn zone. Along with Lanther, two of the dangerous Humboldt forwards. Bombers converge on them at the, uh, along the boards. Puck will stay in. Olafson's down. Puck is picked up here by Bridger, and he'll move it back to center. Quickly knocked away and set back inside the Flint Fawn zone. There's Noah Hool in the corner. Try to get away from traffic, he does. The smooth skating Hool will get it back inside the Broncos zone. They're yelling icing here. Ashton Paul doesn't like it. He beat the deep man in the puck. The bomber bench and the crowd doesn't like it either. But it is a nice. Do they go to center ice here, Austin? Oh, wow. 
Yeah, it looks like Aston Paul was going to get there, but at the same time, I think maybe Humble might have let up a tiny bit once they heard the whistle blow, so that could be the reasoning too, but yeah, Aston Paul and the fans here at the Whitney Forum, definitely not too happy about that one. Faceoff will go in the bomber zone. 9.41 remaining. Lambeer set to line up against Olufsen. The Broncos right off the draw will get it. But Vaughn, no, though, able to clear. Van Blericom will cut that off on the Broncos' side of center. Broncos back to the attack, but the puck knocked away back to center. Here's Tui. Paul got it in tight on him and got it back in deep. Paul will follow him in. They tie up deep in Humboldt territory. Joey Lees was in there as well. As he tried to dig it free. The Broncos to come up with it. But Lee steals it. Back up on the score! How about that? Matt Egan, back in the lineup. And he fools Motu. And the Bombers retake the two-ball lead, four to two. Joey Lees will strip the puck free. And how about that? Matt Egan has made it a 4-2 hockey game. What a beautiful shot. Yeah, I know Matt Egan is feeling great about that one, too. First game back in how long? Just a beautiful goal. But, wow, great job by Joey Lees to really get in there, take that puck away. And, honestly, that was a pretty unsuspected shot there. I don't think well, Motu was, Motu wasn't ready for yeah, it. Yeah, Motu was not ready. And Egan, great shot there from the left circle and just absolutely <laughs> left it rip. And a huge one for the Bombers here. Matt Egan gets his second of the year. Great back in the lineup. He scored on opening night in Nick. And I'll never forget it. A beautiful goal by him. He's had some tough uh, goal with injuries this year. But a fantastic player, Joey Lees. The nice job to strip the puck away. And at 10.48, Clinton will retake the two-goal lead. And we saw some depth scoring last night. We get it again here tonight. A big goal by Matt Egan here in the third period. And it couldn't have come at a better time, Austin, because Humboldt was kind of coming on here. Here's Mueller at center. Mueller tied up by Robertson at the bench. Anderson in there for flip one, and the stick knocked out of his hands. Or so, sorry, somebody else. He's got a broken stick here. Anyway, the fans coming to life here. 8:21 remaining. Media timeout. Big goal by Matt Egan. The Bombers in front, four to two. Here on 102.9 CFAR and FootballOnline.com. Clear. All right, sir. Winter is just around the corner, and RAG wants you to be ready with the Bring Home a Honda event. Light, compact, and easy to handle single stage snowblowers starting as low as 1097. Or take a step up with the dual stage snowblower, more powerful for heavy duty and lots of snow, starting at just over $2,900. And wherever you go, never be without power. Honda is the number one selling portable generator brand in Canada, and you can get your own starting at $1,159. The Bring Home a Honda event at RAG. The North of 53 Co-op has everything you need to make the most elegant feast. That quintessential family meal. How about a company's coming over lavish spread and that perfect just-for-yourself delicacy? But there are also days where you need the Co-op to take care of things for you. Ready-made meals for one and family meal kits are the perfect respite from trying to do everything all at once all the time. Okay. In-store made meals. From ethnic delights to the classics, all at the North of 53 Co-op, you're at home there. Dude, how do you relax with your fridge constantly buzzing like that? What buzzing? What? You don't hear that? Hear what? Going deaf to the appliances in your home? That means it's time for an upgrade with Frigidaire and Creighton Furniture and Appliance Center. French door, side by side, single door, or even top freezer Frigidaire. Ten seconds. The perfect appliance for you. So stop settling for less when you deserve more. Get the fridge that you deserve with Frigidaire and Creighton Furniture and Appliance Center. You're on. And welcome back to Whitney Farm. The football Bombers, a 4-2 lead under eight minutes to go. They come close here as we come up to that media timeout. Semp again, who's got the puck back of the Humboldt. That will bounce it back to the point here to Leper. A lot of traffic in front. Out front, Semp. Oh, he had a wide open Anderson and just missed him with the pass. But Bond throws it back in. That's picked off here by Miles. Quickly to Newins at center. The Broncos back on offense across the Bomber blue line. Newins out front. Leper intercepted that one. Couldn't get it out. Knocked down along the boards that time. By Nazareth, but he's taken to the ice. Flint one. Noah Houle. Back to Silvestri at center. Hammers it in wide of the Bronco net. Big hit as Silvestri steps into new ones just below us. Real physical game here tonight. Walker gets free. Here's Piccinino. Trying to throw it out front. Hit a skate. 
Scooped up here by Silvestri. Fit fires and Motu will reach up and grab that one. 7 2 to go in the third period. What a big goal by Matt Egan. Yeah, now the Bombers really putting on the pressure too here on the forecheck. Humboldt looks a little flustered right now with after that goal. So great job by Matt Egan. And now it looks like the momentum is here in the Bombers' favor. 37-35, the shots in favor of Humboldt. It's tight. It's 9-5 Flintflon shots here in the third. Broncos win the draw. Van Blair. Wow, another good crowd here tonight. I think they had an 899 last night, 871 announced here tonight. But when you have the two top teams in junior A hockey playing, you should have good crowds. Broncos throw it in deep. They have the puck back of the net. Nice move there by Van Blericon. Back out front. Pinching in that time was Lanthier. But they couldn't get it, so Bombers bounced it off the board. Knocked up by Robertson. A shot. Ooh, that took a funny hop off Laser Hume. Van Blericon back of the net. Tied up. They throw it out front. Bryson in there. He'll drop it back to Sorreo. Sorreo. Back out front. One timer there. Blocked by Silvestri. Puck rolls out. Piccinino racing after him. But Robertson able to get back and break it up. And he'll pick up the puck inside his own zone. Down the ice it goes. I don't think it hit anybody. They say it did. Here's Silvestri. Back to center. Try to come back to Olison. Bryson cut that off. Bryson for the Broncos. <laughs> Ripped that one just wide. And again. They're having a hard time hitting the net, but they'll hold the puck. And here's Spencer Bell. Bell! He misses the net as well. Here's Ashton Paul. Listen ahead to Silvestri. Off his glove. Couldn't knock it down. Clearly two great chances by Humboldt, but they missed the net both times. They'll carry it back inside the flint zone. zone. Van Blericon. Try to come back out front to Bell. Knocked away that time by Silvestri. Gets it back to center. There's Legal. Back to Miles. Miles spins. Falls down. Gets it back to Legal. He'll pick it up. Humboldt was changing, and he'll flip it in with 5.21 to play in this third period. One fall in front, 4-2, a big goal again by Matt Egan here in the third period. As Bridger gets a hold of it, he sends it to look out. Motu wasn't paying attention. It took a funny hop and hit the side of his own net. Decided he better move over to the other side of the post. We go back to the goal. Over to Miller, out of his reach. Leper back there. Amaral tied him up. They fall down. Puck comes out front. Here's Tui. He tried to pinch in, but knocked away from him. Bridger back the other way. Bridger, knocked down by Cook. Bombers will dump it in. Tui there to get it back in his own net. Boy, talk about one heck of a quick pace here. Cook loses the handle. Joey leaves after it. Back to the goal for Mueller. Mueller bounced it up the board. Here's Leper. Leper, back out front. Flip one, looking to take a whack at it. Joey Lees couldn't get a stick on it. But he knocks it down and holds it in. Boy, Joey Lees. Two fantastic shifts here. He'll dump that one in, too to the line. Matt Egan knocked it down. Here's Matt Egan back out front. Joey Lees can't shoot it. Joey Lees back to blue. And now he lets a rip. Motu stopped that. Here's Mueller on the uh, rebound. Mueller back to that. Left it back there for Egan. Boy, this fourth line. What a shift here. Back of the goal again. Mueller trying to get free. Takes a high stick. He's going to draw a penalty. And with 4-0-1 to go, Austin Mattis, a great chance for another insurance goal here for Flint Swan. How about the play of that fourth line? Well, and that's what you about to mention, Rob, this fourth line here of Egan Lees, Joey Lees, and Brock Mueller. Like we said, maybe a fourth line, but on this Bombers team, there really is no fourth line. So oh. many skilled players across all four lines. It just goes to show they're doing so much for this Bombers team right now. Cook, the Humboldt deep man, will take the high stick and put one on the power play. With 4.01 to go, they're one for two in the game, and again, ranked number one in the league coming into tonight at 23.7%. So here we go. Lees wins the draw. Here is Anderson back up front. Oh, Silvestri robbed by Motu. What a save. What a move, too. Silvestri keeps it, shoots it, rips that one over top of the net. Knocked down by Bacher. Boy, the Bacher's so many offensive weapons. Anderson will knock it down. Five power play goals for him this year. Back to Bacher. Back out front to Silvestri. Back out front. Here's Anderson. And he'll seven over top of the net. Silvestri. Here's Bacher. Bacher again. Knocked it down to the blue line. The hole back up on Anderson. A drive. Both two stopped it. Puck stays out. Look out. Uh -oh. Maven comes in there. Throws a couple extra shots. It leaves the captain. 
and getting feisty here. The amazing thing is, so many chances for Flint Forest, they only burned 33 seconds and still got a minute 27 to go on that power play. That's how lethal it is. Yeah, that felt like it was already two minutes with all the pressure they were putting, out, putting on right there, but just great passing here from the Bombers and just the chemistry between on this uh, on this line is just undeniable. You know what? You think it's going to be a shot? They pass it off. They just they don't. They're not afraid to make that extra pass, and it really shows getting some great opportunities. And Mochu with a huge save as well, though. Shot dead even at 38 apiece. Another big face off of the Humboldt zone. 328 to go. Flip on our foot, four to two. And on the power play here for another minute 25. Blocker can't hold it in. Grabbed here by Noah Hull. The Bomber fans start to get real charged up here. Boy, if they can get to their goal here, I think this place might go nuts. Leaves. Back to Hool. But you got to be careful. This is a dangerous Humboldt team. They're never out of the game. Hool. Band on it. Throws it across the Bronco line. Grabbed by Miles. Blocked by Leaves. Puck will stay in. Silvestri can't do much with it. Bounces out. Flintspot will get it back. Leaves comes back again at his side of center. Kind of shake it up. He took that shot in the midsection. Silvestri. Trying to get across the line. Here comes Justin Lees. On the line, a shot. Oh, it's like a funny hop and just went over top of that head. Mo two fools. Silvestri. Back in the goal for Anderson. Robertson tries to take it from him. Try to pin it up. 40 seconds to go in the power play. 239 remaining in the third period. Tuck, Buck, Duck, Free, Bockler. Out front. Here's Hool. Shoots. Gets blocked. Hool will get his own rebound. Into the corner for Anderson. Try to come out front. Hits the stick and comes back to center. 25 seconds remaining power play. Here's Bockler. Take it off. Bockler in a long backhander. Motu stopped him. Bockler back out front to Tanchuk. Tanchuk knocked it down. Throws that towards the front. That's back out front. Nobody there. Buck will come outside the zone. And here's McDutt. Grabbing it for Flint Fawn inside his own zone. So Humboldt finds a way to kill this power play. They still have life with two minutes to play. Back to five aside, the Broncos have the puck in the flip one zone, fired wide that time by Lanthier. Well, the Bombers come close to the power play, but they can't get it to go. And somebody hit it ahead with a glove pass, they'll blow that down at 149. The Humboldt net is empty. Motu's made his way to the bench. I think Humboldt wants to call a timeout, I believe. Maybe not. What a great job on the power play there for the Bombers. No goals, but, you know, two minutes, like you said, Rob, probably felt like five if you're the humble Broncos. Just constant pressure, constant opportunities. Great job by them to kill that penalty, but Flint Flint Bombers really showing the pressure they can put on that power play. Face off outside the Bomber blue line. Uh, Motu goes back in for the time being. If they can get the puck in deep, Humboldt, then I'm sure he'll be back off. He's halfway out. There he goes. Weagle. His shot hits the stick, rolls inside the Flint Flint zone. McNutt in the corner. Tried to freeze that one up. Pacino can't get it out. Broncos converge on it. 134 to go. Humboldt net empty. Play inside the Flint Swan zone. Broncos Bryson tried to come out front. Intercepted. Here's Liam Bridger. He'll lift it out towards the open net. It's going to be wide. And a nice call against the Bombers with 121 remaining. Oh, what an exciting game here at the Whitney Forum. Shots 39-38 in favor of Flint Swan. And boy, two fantastic games and I think Scott Vardy's got the whiteboard out. You know what that means. Yeah, well, both are calling a timeout. We'll do the same. 121 remaining. Don't go anywhere. Exciting finish here at the Whitney Forum on 1029 CFAR and FlintBlonOnline.com. Clear. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We'll get in there, Ricky Bobby, but first take it. After this one, it'll be nine, including the post game. Woohoo! This is one of the best damn experiences of my entire life. Ten seconds. Take place in the Gas Police 500. Arctic beverages, Jack Lynch beef jerky. Feed your wild side. You're on. 121 remaining in the third period, a 4-2 flip one lead. Boy, how big of a goal is that from Matt Egan now in this third period? If the Broncos have got the goalie pulled, they'll go for broke here. And Spencer Bell will get set for the big face stop inside the flip one zone as he'll line up here against Anthony Piccinino. Boy, an electric atmosphere here tonight. What a hockey game. Bombers win the face off. that got quickly picked it up. He's going to go for the empty net as well. Knocked down by Van Blericom. And he'll quickly get that one back here to Weagle. So Weagle at center. We'll get a hold of it. He'll dump it in. 
Laser Hume out of his own net, played it around the boards. Oh, overskated by Tadzik, sitting at Fired Weagle, what a save by Harmon Laser Hume. And expect Humboldt to put as many shots towards the front of the net as they can. He spins, gets a great shot, and uh, that's a great save by Harmon Laser Hume. Yeah, Laser Hume feeling red hot, and yeah. Right now, expect the Broncos, tons of pressure. They've been doing it all game, but now with the goalie pulled, they got the extra man. It's uh, down to crunch time with a minute left here. 101 remaining on the clock. Bell lines up for Boxer football, wins the face off again. Here's McNutt. Over to Tanchuk, does the smart thing. He'll dump it out. Puck will make his way just over the Humboldt line. They'll tap it back. Tanchuk there plays it back inside the Humboldt zone. That's icing again. 49.3 seconds to go. And Bell will once again get a chance to go over some strategy here with the humble Captain Newens. And we're going to face off back inside football territory to the left of Harmon Laser Hume. We're going to let Lampier take the draw this time. I guess he's, Bell's lost the last two to pays off. Humboldt wins the face off. Here's Bryson. Back to Weagle. Through traffic. Off the stick. Over top of the net it goes. Weagle picked it up. Back to Bell. Better coffee can't hold it. Lee's the captain. Picks it up. Lee's is going to put it in an empty net. And that's going to seal the deal. Back to back wins against the powerful Humboldt Broncos. And I have a feeling when the CJHL Rankings come out on Monday, Austin, we all know who's going to be the number one team in the country yet again. Yeah, Rob, it's going to be the fourth week in a row. And you know what, Rob? I expected the Bombers to win last night. Tonight, I thought it was going to be a it was a tight game, don't get me wrong, but wow, two wins against the great Humboldt Broncos team. Just very impressive performance here tonight from the Bombers, honestly. Very impressive. Two goals from Justin Lee for the time Lee has taken over the uh, the league lead. We'll have to wait and see how Dugate's made out with Belfort tonight. But the captain, Lee, scores it in the empty net. Football will take a 5-2 to two lead. Broncos come right back off the face. A penalty being called here as uh, the uh, Bronco forward Strom was taken down. Well, hook and call coming up against Joey Lee's here. But I think that lead is probably safe with three goals and there's 23 seconds left in the hockey game. Yeah, I know uh, Mike Reagan's definitely feeling pretty good after this game. You know what? He was talking about how the team's at number one. You know, always when your team's at number one, obviously you have that target on your back, and they don't give out trophies in November, Rob, but you know what? Definitely a good feeling to get this one tonight against the great humble Broncos team, and I know the Bombers are going to enjoy this one. Face off inside football territory. There's Chow flipping it around the board. Cut off by Soreo. He'll dump it in. Bourgeois can't knock it down. Puck comes on, but Lee's, or uh, Laser Hill rather will jump on that. And he'll hold on with 13.3 seconds to go. Lee's off for interference as Joey Lee's. This is the third Bronco power play of the night. They're 0 for 2. And going in to take the face off will be Scott Stad against uh, Silvestri. Back out front. There's a chance just ripped wide that time by Weagle. Boy, Weagle can really shoot the puck. Rail back. Broncos moving in. They'll lift it over top of the bomber net. And you can hear the bomber faithful come to, come to life here. As the puck is picked up here by Lee. Wow, what a game. What a game for the Flint Swan Bombers. They hold Humboldt to seven shots in that third period. But you're right. What a night for the Flint Swan Bombers to improve to... 18-1-1 one, and one on the season. Well, you know, Rob, you talked to Jacob Vosser. You asked him if at the beginning of the season you thought the Bombers, you know, we know they're going to be a good team as, as they have been the past four or five years, but you know what? I don't even think Mike Reagan himself would have predicted 18-1-1. One, and one. What a record to start off for the Bombers and a great showing tonight against one of the other top teams in the country. And I think it's got to be kind of a bit of a, a, bit of a statement weekend, right? I mean, it's one thing to... To beat up on the Laser Red Wings for the Estevan Bruins. Another thing to, be, to win two games back to back against very good Humboldt teams. So, uh, full marks the Bombers. Two fantastic efforts. Uh, premier guys scoring. Great goaltending. Secondary scoring. A little bit of everything. Uh, especially teams were great. The Bombers didn't give up a single power play goal in the weekend. Able to get a, a big power play goal here tonight. It's a pretty happy group. And you know what? They really should be. Absolutely, Rob. You know what? I would say these past two nights, uh, not perfect performances, but definitely one of the best performances the Bombers have put on so far. And obviously it makes a big difference, like you said, you know, when you play a high-quality team like Humboldt, 
but they really came out to play and like I said they deserve everything they got right now because like I said just an imp impressive showing from the Flin Flon Bombers and like I said more than I even expected tonight to how they were going to play. Harmon Laser here pretty excited he should be fantastic again. The Bombers win 5-2 to two and pick up their 18th win of the year. This is Creighton Furniture Flint Flon Bomber Hockey from a victorious Whitney Forum here on 102.9 CFAR and FlintFlonOnline.com. Dude. Claire, you relax with your fridge constantly buzzing like that. What? Bite. Sure. What? You don't hear that? Hear what? Going deaf to the appliances in your home? That means it's time for an upgrade with Frigidaire and Creighton Furniture and Appliance Center. French door, side by side, single door, or even top freezer, Frigidaire has the perfect appliance for you. So stop settling for less, and you deserve more. Get the fridge that you deserve with Frigidaire and Creighton Furniture and Appliance Center. Northland Ford proudly supports the Flin Flon Bombers throughout the SJHL season. We know that the Bombers will play tough like the Ford F-150, the toughest truck on the market for over 40 years. Northland Ford helping the community cheer on the Bombers as they work to bring a championship to the best fans in the league, and they provide you with the best selection on their lot. In the North, for the North, Northland Ford, the dealership you tell your friends about. It's that time of year, I love to head to Shane's. Black Friday deals are not just on Black Friday anymore. And at Shane's, I always know I'm going to find the perfect gift. The thing I really wanted. Well, you know what I meant, the thing they always wanted. And I'm feeling the thrill of shopping. Wow, look at the Black Friday promotions in Samsung. Love that 75-inch Samsung Smart TV. Look at the picture quality. And I think I'll need that sound bar and Wi-Fi speaker too. I love shopping at Shane's. So convenient. At the right price for the stuff I want. Did I say me again? I don't know what I'm thinking. Where is that Christmas list? Santa. With Samsung and Shane's in the paw at the Attenica Mall. It's on now until next Saturday. See you shopping at Shane. You're on. And welcome back to Whitney Forum. Big game, big win for the football bombers once again as they uh, pick up the 5-2 victory. And uh, pick up their 18th victory in the process. Let's uh, run down all the goals here today. Why are they still playing music when people are leaving? Anyway, let's uh, run down the goals here. The Bombers uh, get things going here at the uh, 17.04 mark of the opening period. A big goal by uh, Cohen Sam. And I, again, I think that probably Motu might want that one back. Uh, Lee's won the faceoff. He got it back to him quickly. And he fired it off his glove. It kind of handcuffed him a little bit and dropped behind him. And uh, definitely one I'm sure he wants back. But uh, that's why you shoot the puck, right? Oh, absolutely. And like I said, Cohen Sam. Uh, you know, always one of those guys, too, you get those little sneaky goals, and like you said, right off the draw, saw the opportunity, took it, and it was right after we, you know, we were giving credit to Motu for saying he's a nice, you know, he's nice and calm, he's nice and cool, he's nice and collected, and maybe there, like we said, maybe a little too cool, rolls, rolls over his shoulder for the first goal, and a, one that really opened, uh, opened the can there for the Flin Flon Bombers. So one nothing Flin Flon after one, uh, Justin Lees, what a night he had, comes back with his 15th from Shaw, 4-13 in the second. Quickly, 2 0. The Broncos would respond. That's as close as they get all night. Amaral, 6 from Strome. That came at 6 38. 2 1 at that point. But a big goal by Alexis Silvestri on the power play. Stands up as the game winner. His uh, 13th of the year. Leaves at Bachner, the assistant, 8 17. Restored the two goal lead. They, they're up 3 to 1. Then in the second period, or the third period, they get a big insurance goal. Well, Cook would make a 3 2. Pardon me, I missed that one. His third from Miller and Bryson. At the uh, 7.05 mark, so Humboldt still plenty of time, got right back in it. But then Matt Egan, what a story. He's been, uh, like we said, had a bit of an injury bug this year. He's been really fighting to get back in the lineup. He does. Scores a beautiful goal. Joey Lee struck the puck away from the defenseman. Feeds it back out to Egan, who lets her rip. He goes low uh, glove side here on the uh, netminder, uh, Motu. And uh, Egan's second of the year. A big, big goal game. A little bit more breathing room. They're up 4-2. to two. But then they would eventually get another goal in the empty net. Justin Lee's the captain, converts his three-point night. Uh, he knocks the puck away, picks it up, gets up the middle of the ice, gets it alone, and fires home his 16th of the season unassisted at 19:25. Shots in that third period, 14-7 Flin Flon. They wind up with 40 tonight. The Broncos wind up with 39. But all in all, again, Austin Mattis, a terrific hockey game and a big outcome for the Flin Flon Bombers who sweep the weekend set, which isn't easy to do against anybody let alone humble, but boy, what a weekend for Flin Flon. Uh, 
a 5-1 win last night, a 5-2 win tonight, and 18-1-1 uh, to start the year out. Uh, just an incredible run by this team. Yeah, overall, just impressive this week. And like you said, you know what? It's always hard to get that second game in a row, but they really came out to play tonight. Big credit to Harmon Laser Human, like you said. What a great story for Matt Egan to come back after being hurt for so long, get that insurance goal, a huge one there for the Flint Flon Bombers, and then also another feel-good story for today was Carter Anderson. Great to see him come back and get out on the ice after taking a, a pretty hard inter interference call behind the net, went off. Looks like we didn't really know what was going to happen, but he comes back on and really makes a difference out there right away. So overall, just great game to watch. Uh, rather you're a Flint Flon Bomber, fan or a humble Broncos fan. Great game, great hockey, high level, high skill, and just overall, what an experience tonight to see this game. It was. Flint Flon wins it 5-2. to two. We'll take a break. Post-game show awards are next here on 102.9 CFAR and FlintFlonOnline.com. I'm Claire. proud to be a sponsor of this Bomber. All right, sir. Through bursaries, donations for hockey schools and clubs, community events, charities, and so much more, HUD Bay has supported the Flint Flon community with their dedication and generosity for decades and continues to be a major donator to charities, events, and organizations. HUD Bay thanks the people of Flint Flon and the surrounding communities for their continued support. And uh, here's a stick I found in the yard, and that's my show and tell. <sighs> Very good. Next... I'm showing and telling the Nuggets from KFC. Oh, this is so much better than mine. You, quiet. Carry on. Original recipe nuggets from KFC. Mouth-watering morsels, crispy on the outside, and juicy 100% white meat on the inside. That's what I call an A+. Even better than an A, KFC. So good. Great North GM in DePauw is one of the leading new and used vehicle dealers in northern Manitoba. Equipped with a highly trained and professional sales department, they also have multiple certified trained technicians on site to make sure you get the best service for your car or SUV at an amazing price. Great North GM. It's always a great day at Great North GM. You're on. All righty, welcome back to the Whitney Forum. Before we uh, get to the head coach Jim of the Bombers, Mike Reagan, Austin Mattis has got our KFC three-star selection. Let's go. Well, I think for the third star today, you know what, so many guys you could choose. Before we get into it, huge honorable mention to Harmon Laser Hume. He obviously first star last night. He had a 49, 49 stops on 50 shots. So tonight, he doesn't get all the glory, but definitely an honorable mention. So third star today, without a doubt, Cohen Stems got the first opening goal here for the Bombers. Really opened set up. The tone. Yeah, set the tone, really opened it up for them. So a huge goal for him. So third star, Cohen Stems. Second one, of course, got to be Matt Egan after not playing for however long, right? few weeks with the injury, comes back, gets the huge insurance goal in the, in the third period. A huge one for the Bombers to really seal the deal. And then, of course, I think first star today, everyone knows uh, the Flynn Flon local, the man Justin Lee, two goals, two assists, the empty netter at the end, and that beautiful wrist shot goal from the high slot there. Really, to, to really do a great job for the Bombers and get the scoring going, change momentum. So those are the three stars for the warrior of the game. Well, I think uh, we've got to go none other than Carter Anderson. Carter Anderson obviously got hurt today. You know what? Great player for the Flint Flon Bombers. Could have been detrimental if he, if he was out for however many games. But you know what? Comes back in the third period, right off the hop in the first 20 seconds, already throwing hits, putting his body out there, laying his body on the line like he never got hurt in the first place. So those uh, that's your Warrior of the Game and your three stars, Rob. But overall, I'm so many people. I'm putting the Bomber fourth line in there, too, for the Warrior of the Game. All three guys were fantastic. Egan Mueller and uh, Joey Lees. Olafson as well uh, had another nice game. So uh, well, multiple Warriors here tonight. Blocked some, a couple some big shots here tonight. So uh, no question about it. All those guys are great selections. And, and like we said, Bombers a little bit of everything to uh, to get the weekend sweep. We'll pass the headset over to Mike Reagan. We'll see how he saw things here tonight. His team, like we said, the 5-1 victory yesterday, the 5-2 win here tonight, Mike. And uh, again, nice to, we'll start things off. Uh, to, nice to get some offense in the third line. Again, nice story. Matt Egan finally back in uniform and scored a really nice goal. Yeah, very happy for him. He said to me after his first couple shifts, he's like, Regs, I'm whiffing on everything. And I said, just stick with it. You're you're fine and, and uh, keep going. And, you know, we know that there's some rust there and it's going to take some time and that. But couldn't be happier for for him. You know, like he's gone through a lot over the last couple of years. And, uh, you know, he's battled through a lot of adversity. And, and um, you know, he wears his heart on his sleeve and um you know so to get that goal for him is huge and and especially you know like last year he was he was struggling with um you know scoring he, he hit a lot of posts and 
crossbars, and he was really frustrated, and we were really hoping he'd get off to a good start early on, and he scored, I think, in his first couple games. Yeah, then, right, the nip went opening night, he got a goal. Yeah, and then, and then he gets hurt, and then, you know, he comes back, and we're just like, okay, hopefully he can, you know, get get that confidence early, and, and he scores a huge goal, and a nice, you know, I, a lot of people just look at the goal, but, you know, Ashton Paul is, he, he's, he's starting to come in and, and uh, you know, learn the bomber way. Um, here's a kid that hasn't played for a lot of successful teams in the, in the past couple of years and stuff like that, and he's learning the bomber way, and he wins a battle in the corner, which keeps the puck alive, and then Joey actually wins a battle yeah. and one hand passes it to Eags, and Eags is ready to rip that puck, and he's got such a good shot, and, you know, so happy to see that go in. Obviously, it was a big goal for for the team, but a big goal for him as well. It was a big moment. Justin Lee is the captain with four points, two goals again, uh, and that, that beautiful goal here, his first one tonight, just knocked it down and got lots of room, skating around, found a good uh, spot on the ice, and uh, I don't know if there's any goal in the league that's going to stop that. Yeah, Justin, he's so strong, and he's such a powerful skater, and, you know, I mean, he's just a weapon, and uh, it's exciting to watch. You know, like, uh, we're very fortunate to, to have the players that we do, and pretty entertaining for our fans. You know, let's get back to Harmon Laser Hume, Mike, and he very well could have been a star again that I probably should have been, but, I mean, so many players play so well, it's tough. Yeah. Uh, he was dialed in yesterday. He made some great saves again here tonight. Here's the interesting thing that I mentioned to Austin when we started the broadcast here tonight, and I guess there's been some people, you know, make kind of comments, was the goaltending good enough? The one thing I will say about Harmon Laser Hume, anytime you needed a big game from him last year, you got it. I go back to the Estevan series. You're facing elimination in game six. He was brilliant. He came back here for game seven, good again. Won the Humboldt series, and I guess the Battleford series, uh, I think the team has run out of gas, uh, period. But anytime you need to win a big game last year, Mike, he did it. And he was dialed in this weekend against a very good hockey team and uh, two master uh, masterpiece uh, performances here. I, I agree with you, Hardy. And, and, you know, this was a big weekend for, for Laser. You know, I think his numbers aren't where they he wanted them to be and, and stuff like that. And, you know, there, there's certain parts of the year that maybe just don't go your way, but... He came up huge this weekend, and, and that's what matters. You know, in the big games, you got to have your, your best players elevate their game, and, and he, he definitely did that. Uh, you know, the one thing about Laser that, that a lot of people don't know, I mean, this guy's preparation's unbelievable. Like, he, he's, he's so committed. Um, he's so focused. Uh, he could probably tell you every goalie stat in, in Western Canada. Um, you know, he's just, he just, he, he takes it serious, you know, and he, he wants to win badly, and... Uh, you know, I think last year was his first opportunity to to be in a position where, you know, he given the ball to run with on, on a good team, and, and he took us to, to the finals. You know, yeah. at, at the end of the day, he got to the finals. We ran into, you know, a, a very good team in Battleford, and like you said, Hardy, I mean, we were so banged up that, uh, you know, it was like playing on one leg, but uh, he, he did great and uh, was really happy for, for him and also for the team that we, we need that type of goaltending. It was spectacular. Quickly, Mike, before we let you go, I mean, you've had a lot of success this year. I mean, you're 18-101. What a start for the team. But beating Humboldt back-to-back, -back, is this kind of a bit of a, a, a statement weekend for your team to, to the rest of the league? For sure. We talked about that. You know, we know Humboldt's a really good team, and, uh, you know, those were two really good games. Uh, you know, I, I think some people look at the scoreboard and go 5-1, 5-2. You know, Plimpton dominated. No, it, it, it could have went either way. Right. The, the difference for us is our guys capitalized on, on their opportunities, and, you know, I thought their goaltending was good as well. Um, just we've got we've got some really potent offensive guys. You know that can you give them a, just a, an inch and and they'll take it, advantage of it. And you know, happy for center. You know, we were struggling getting pucks to the net, and we were just talking about like get more puck, get more pucks to the net. Off of face off, he throws it to the net. You know, Motu kind of juggles it, and it ends up going in, and it just gave us a lot of life. Right. And, and, and that sort of thing. And, you know, there's a young guy, and I know his dad's probably listening, and I told his dad at Parents Weekend, just just trust us, relax, he's going to be fine. And, you know, he's now he's got three goals, I think, and he's he's coming into his own. He's starting to get a little more comfortable, and, and uh, you know, probably things are slowing down for him, even though this weekend was real real quick. But, uh, you know, he's going to be a great, great player, and, um, you know, it's it's about giving him time and letting him adjust to the, to, to the pace of the game. And... Uh, He's smart. That's the thing. He's got a great hockey IQ, and and uh, those guys with the hockey IQ, it just takes them a matter of time to figure it out. Well, and another thing, a uh, big thing about the two games too, Mike, is their penalty kill. Ninety percent. That's incredible. 
I mean, Humboldt didn't have a ton of power plays tonight, but, again, you get a power play goal, a, a little things within the game. That was a big power play he goal liked, by Silvestri that put he, you up. Well, it sounds like it was a game winner, but uh, those special teams came into play tonight, too. Well, and, you know, it's it, what's, uh, what's really nice is, like, that's something we've worked on in practice this week and something that we talked about. We went over on video before yesterday's game. We went over on video today's game. And it worked. And that's why you see Justin come back to the bench. He's got a huge smile. And, you know, like when, when things work that you, you work on, I mean, it's, it's such a great feeling. And, uh, you know, our penalty kill has been the back, backbone of our team this year, uh, done a tremendous job. And, uh, you know, our power play came through for us tonight, which is, which is big. Great weekend, Mike. And now it's actually, we, I guess we should tee up the road trip because it's a big one. Yeah. It's Yorkton, Melville, Yorkton next weekend, and these teams are anything but slouches. Well, and Yorkton's coming on. And they got that goaltender, that, yeah. and he's made a big difference there, and they got some they got some confidence now. Well, we, we know Farrell. Farrell started as a bomber. And then he was an OTN right? last yeah. year, and he was an all-star in the MJHL last year. Yeah, yeah, so we're very familiar with him, and he's a good goaltender, and, you know, uh, it's amazing what, you know, a guy that can come up with some big saves for you, what it does for the confidence of the team, and, He's doing that right now in Yorkton. And again, you know, I was talking about this with uh, Rory McGoran here today, too. We talked about the tough echelon teams in the SJHL, but those bottom feeders have made big differences. I mean, York, Melville, uh, as well as uh, Kindersley and teams like that have really struggled the last few years. They've made coaching changes, and they're not, now, now they're tough outs. I mean, this, I, don't know, I don't think you really have a bottom end in this league anymore. No, you don't. And, you know, when, when uh, Kindersley hired Clayton and, and when, uh, you know, uh, Doug and I are good buddies, and, and, and that, and we talked a lot. And when he got the job in Melville, I, I, right away, you go. The league is, the league's better. You got two experienced coaches that have came in there, that know what they're doing, had success in this league before, and uh, you know, you take a look at Kindersley. They're starting to come around and, and gaining momentum, and and it takes some time, you know, Clayton to implement his system, and then of course Doug. I mean, we all know. How, how good of a defensive team he always has, and uh, he, he does a great job, and, and so, you know, that makes the entire league better, and, and it also, it's it's a much more challenging uh, job for teams when you're going on the road. I, w I think you and I talked about it. We've only had one loss in Melville. Yeah, and it was a one nothing game that one. You're, you're, like, you're totally since the, since the new rink. Yeah, the old, the old rink was tough. Yeah, the old rink, I think it was the opposite. I, I, I think I did, I don't know how many games I did in the old rink. How long has the new rink been around? About six years? A little bit longer than that. Now, anyway, probably. so let's say 18 years I went there. The Bombers won twice yeah. in all the times I went there. Yeah, a tough, tough rink for sure. And we've had success in Melville, but you know that that's going to change with Doug's system in there. And they'll have a little bit of confidence, too, because they beat you here. Yeah, 100%. So It'll be an interesting road trip. Three and three is never easy. Uh, we're excited about the challenge, but we're going to enjoy this weekend. Congratulations, Mike. Job well done against yeah. a good team. Thanks very much. Bombers win again 5 2. We'll take one last break and come back with a wrap up momentarily here on 1029 CFAR and FlintFawnOnline.com. Claire, for a limited time at McDonald's, enjoy a tasty breakfast trio. Your choice of. And I'm expecting Grey Cup picks as well, Rob. In the small premium roast coffee for only $5 plus tax. Available before 11 a.m. at participating McDonald's restaurants in Canada. Plus, earn points on every order with the My McDonald's Rewards exclusively on the McDonald's app. Redeem points for your McDonald's favorites like McFlurries, McChickens, and more. Download the app today. Bailey Homes provides a ready-to-move home as unique as you and your family. From the expertise in the planning, the quality of the build, and the care of the move, let Bailey Homes make your dream home a reality. All customized to fit your needs, they allow you to take the stress out of home construction and spend more time making everlasting memories. Family owned and operated with experiences in the north, visit bailey-homes.ca or call 204-903-5220. Life is full of big decisions, but one people often forget is purchasing new windows and doors. And at Jim's Custom Doors and Windows, they help you make the right decision with Huron Windows and Doors. From style and material to purpose and design, they'll show you what's best for your home. And with Huron's Energy Star certified products, 10 seconds, will you stay protected but save money as well? Make your next big decision with Huron Windows and Doors at Jim's Custom Doors and Windows. Huron. And welcome back to Whitney Forum. Quickly before we wrap it up, let's take a look at the McDonald's out of town scoreboard here tonight. Uh, it's uh, 10 straight wins for the Battle for Stars as they held off Laurent's 4 3. That means the Wolves are now winless in their last seven games. 
Wild one tonight at uh, Horizon Credit Union Center in Melville. The Millionaires hold off the Bruins 8-6. to six. Also tonight we have Melford, a big win. They took care of Yorkton tonight 8-5. to five. Left a lot of offense for Melford. And Kindersley, Notre Dame in overtime. They are tied up at four. And by the way, Dugay has at least two goals tonight. So he still remains the league leader in goals with 17. And uh, actually, I'll check and see if he got any more here. But uh, he did have two for sure. When I checked the last time, so we do know that he is leading the league in goals. And now it doesn't want to load up. Well, here we go. I mentioned Justin Lees for the time being had the lead, but uh, Dugay, two goals that I know of. And seeing if he's got another one. No, just the two, but uh, he does now lead the league again with 17. Uh, quickly, some NHL finals here tonight. We had uh, Tampa Bay beat Edmonton today 6-4. to four. Ottawa over Minnesota in the shootout 2-1. to one. The Flyers surprised Vegas in overtime 4-3. to three. Uh, Carolina beat Pittsburgh 4-2. to two. Nashville over Chicago 4-2. to two. Boston beat Montreal 5-2. The Islanders over Calgary in the shootout 5-4. to four. The Rangers beat New Jersey 5-3. The Jets a big win. They took care of Arizona 5-2. to two. Uh, Pets spread U11 Bombers today in Swan River. Lost to Dauphin, uh, but did rebound to uh, beat Thompson. So they're in the semifinals against Northeast tomorrow. And again, a big congratulations to Hatnot Kings and Queens senior volleyball teams. Zone champions. The Queens taking care of uh, business on home turf. They beat Cranberry today 25-14, 25-12. The Kings get her done in Cranberry, also against the Raiders, 25-15, 25-20. So that's the McDonald's out-of-town scoreboard. Quickly, uh, Austin, before we wrap it up, Grey Cup tomorrow. How does it look to you? Oh, I'm, I'm excited, Rob. And you know what? My uh, my family's had bomber season tickets for the past I don't years. care. What's the score going to be? The score's going to be, ooh, I think it's going to be like a 35-14, 35-10 kind of game. But, really? Uh, that much? You know what, Rob? Yeah, Montreal is a good team, but you know what? They don't have Anthony Calvillo. They got Fajardo. He's, <laughs> he, he's no no great quarterback, but you know what? I will say if uh, I think he needs to extend his legs a little more and get a bit more in the run game if he wants to help that team on some first downs. But this Bomber team, they've been solid all year, but no discredit to Montreal. They took down a great Toronto team that even Winnipeg struggled with. So I, I think it's going to be a good game for the Bombers, but you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if Montreal keeps it close. Here's the thing, and you and I talked about this off the air today, and I was watching the panel. You lots of CFL coverage on this today. They say it's tough to beat the same team in a season three times, but I will say this, and I mentioned this to Roy McGoran, who's also a big football guy out of Winnipeg as well, big Blue Bomber fan like us, and it could be the end of an era here for Jefferson, for Big Hill. All these guys are getting older, so I really hope for Winnipeg's case they can win tomorrow because it might be their last chance. Jefferson, uh, Big Hill, like we said, a lot of guys uh, get, get getting older now. They've been together for a while. Jeff Code, I can go on and on. It's a great team, uh, certainly well coached, but uh, could be the end of an era. And I'd also like to see them do it because you don't get to use the word dynasty in sports too often anymore. They'd be the first team since the Edmonton Eskimos of the 70s to win three out of four great cups. So a lot riding on tomorrow's game. I'm hoping Winnipeg does it. I think it's going to be a little bit closer to what you said. But it should be interesting, and uh, nothing beats a great cup, a great product of CFL. Oh, yeah, it's going to be a great game. We're going to get the wings, get the nachos, and regardless whoever wins or loses, it's always great to watch some great cup CFL football. So it's going to be a great game regardless. Bombers win 5-2. We'll be on the road uh, for all three games next week in Yorkton on Friday at 7. It's a 7 o'clock start time in Melville Saturday, then 5 o'clock back in Yorkton Sunday. All three games once again here on 102.9 CFER. Great weekend for Flint Bond. They get the sweep. They win 5-2. Good night for the Whitney Foreman. Good hockey.